that's pretty much where we're going to start. And it was, I mean, there's a guy I got to talk about, and that did, and I don't even want to give him too much airtime because, we, like I said, we have a lot to cover this week. It's not just one game or two games or one club series. We have a lot of things to talk to, just pages and pages of notes on, on games that I watched already. And the one guy I really got to laugh at is, is Ish. Ish embarrassed FMB. He took the FMB die way too far. You know, he, he, we all learned if the game isn't going to allow the FMB dot to go down, it's going to get really ugly. And that's what happened to Ish. So we really just want to, you know, have a moment of silence for Ish and his reads in that game versus Lawrence. That's enough. And what I took away mostly from Ish playing this weekend is that my guy Lawrence is simply just a better man player than Ish. I mean, it wasn't because at first when we first started, you know, that's how we started. You know, Ish was the favorite because we know Ish because Ish is in a Twitch chat. Ish is FMB. Ish owes half the community money. Everybody knows Ish for years. So naturally, in the man community, how it's always been, like the person you know is always pretty much going to be the favorite. And that's how it was for Ish going into that. So we were all came in and like, oh, we don't know who Lawrence is. Who is this guy? We've never seen him before. There's no way he beats Ish. And you start thinking, you know, Ish is having a bad game, you know, but maybe it was just Lawrence is better than Ish, and that's pretty much what happened. Ish was his typical, when Ish is bad, man, it's bad, and boy, it was bad for Ish, and you know, as much as I laughed at Bob for throwing a Troy Apke a hundred times in a Houston Texans club series, we got to laugh at Ish. We're not going to show any highlights of Ish. Ish's offense is not worthy of being on the Needed podcast. He really let down everybody <laughs> in the F&B community, and Ish, you know, like I said, but and when your club series is over, your season's looking pretty bleak. So that's how it goes. But, I mean, Lawrence really impressed. And that's pretty much – no, that's not where we're going to start. Because Lawrence played in the finals. The game we're going to start with, break down to the breakdown. We're going to break down a lot of deliverance because he played two games. We got two deliverance. We get to watch read option and three drags a lot today, boys. We're going to break this down as much as it can be breaking down. And the first game I'm going to – Show you guys is probably one of the best players this year. In the first two months, our man's been out with August. August is just about three, two, three months. And, and Chaos is probably one of the best players in the world so far. Obviously, his trip site and that he ran last year that was very good last year is kind of trending into the best offense right now. It is becoming a little bit more popular than Bunch because I think it's it's easier to get a big play. You know, and, and it's it's something that, you know, a lot of kids run on weekend league. A lot of, you know, randoms run chips tight end. And now that elite players are making it great, you know, and the route combinations that they're using out of uh, trips tight end with the inside zone is very good. And Chaos has probably the best trip tight end in the nation. That may be a debate by the end of this podcast. I'll break down how Jay Wall used his trips tight end very well. But the first game I'm going to go ahead and show you guys was chaos probably the, the top trips tight end guy coming into this tournament probably the clear-cut favorite to win pittsburgh club series should have been i mean honestly we probably all would have been on chaos because like i said we knew ish we know chaos obviously we know deliverance but chaos i mean chaos obviously was an ultimate league last year had a very good year last year and streams and everybody knows who he is and, you know and he's very popular right now and his offense is very good so, obviously, we all tuned in to see how he would go ahead and perform. And I will tell you before the start, Chaos, I mean, probably one of the more, like, emotional players. Like, you see his joy, his excitement, and just the main thing I know is he got the the poutiest faces in the community, man. I mean, when things don't go his way, man, he got some pouty faces. Like, it just looks like, oh, man. And then he gets hyped, too. So, he's really just... You know, he really wears his emotion on his sleeve when it's played, but so the deliverance a little bit. So it was a great game. Terrible mental errors in this game. Terrible, terrible, terrible mental errors by a great player that, you know, I, I don't know how long Chaos has been playing Madden. Obviously, last year he really popped up, but I assume he's in his 20s. I mean, he's not that young, so I assume I want to say a couple years. You know, but he made errors like, like he's never played Madden before. And this is... And we will definitely break down all these errors because they were bad. And they cost him this game. And, you know, and that's why I talk about K no matter what happens, 
Deliverance stayed in games to where if you're going to make a mental error against Deliverance, you're going to lose. And I will show you just from the beginning of the game. From the beginning of the game, I don't know if this was nerves. I don't know if this was – but Chaos has played in a lot. He played in Ultimate League last year. In the first play of the game, my man is just going to come out here and he's going to audible to, to the level sale play and he's going to have no plan for what if Deliverance plays hard flats and covers my in route. Where am I going to throw the ball? Oh, no, that wasn't – oh, he already threw the pick. Jeez. Yep, there it is. So what happens is Deliverance runs hard flats. He takes away his uh, takes away his in route, and Chaos fires the corner route and level sails, which isn't good. I mean, this corner route hasn't been completed all year. Fires it right at Deion Sanders, throws a pick six his first play. The first play. Pittsburgh Club Series is all you're thinking about all year. It's the most important thing to you all year. You finally get there. You're by far the favorite, and you throw a pick six the first play. That sucks, you know, but it also showed that uh, he really stayed mentally strong and really stayed in this game because that's something that'll make you just fall apart. And obviously, Deliverance, a guy that want to run the ball, run the ball, snap, throw a drag, throw the table route, keep, you know, keep the ball in front of him. No huge big plays, nothing cute. That's huge for a player like him that just likes to run the ball and play good defense. To go up 7 nothing that fast, man, that's great for, for chaos. Boom, 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 boom. Here, here, so then chaos after that, because obviously we talked about him being a good offensive player. So this drive, at, after that, he goes down the field fairly easily. Use him, he used Barry Sanders at tight end. Fournette, if you have Fournette's in the chat, put your Fournette's in the chat, because that's who chaos used at running back. But I'm going to show you why Fournette let him down on this drive, especially. Because we talked about threes and sevens. I talk about that so much. Third and eight, he goes with a little dot to go to third and eight. Now, this is after he do a pick six, so he has to come down here and get seven, man. He can't settle for another three. He can't, you know, seven three because Deliverance still gets the ball at half. And the, to me, the kind of the judgment of a good offense player is how they play inside the 20-yard line. And what we'll see here is obviously he had trips tight end. He puts the swing route to the right to Fournette. He's going to make a read between Barry Sanders or Leonard Fournette. And the first play right here, he makes a read to Fournette. And honestly, we got to go ahead and give Deliverance his, his credit. Clicking on app, you run down, making a tackle, and he lost a yard on that play. I thought he was at the 15, now he's at the 16. That's Fournette one-on-one, -on -one, but Apke, he gets taken down. So right there, you're like, damn, I just paid 55 cap or 640 cap for my running, whatever Fournette that is, for my running back, and he got tackled by a 20 cap or a 19 cap safety. So I need better out of Fournette. But, you know, I like Fournette, so I'm going to give him another chance. Once again, Apke almost hit sticks for net right there. So a little pause the game right there. So he makes the right read two plays in a row to Leonard Fournette. And Leonard Fournette with two catches in the flat, one-on-one -on -one with Troy Apke, gets four yards total. So that's two yards Leonard Fournette, who's probably behind Ricky Williams, one of the best running backs in the game. And he, Troy Apke brings him down for pretty much no gain on these plays. So he gets himself to a third and six here on the 11-yard line. Honestly, I forget the play that he runs. But I thought that was big that Fournette was actually able to ta be tackled by Apke. Did not get a good truck. Did not get a good spin. And that's something that really caused this drive to be rough for him. Because once you get inside the 10, it's hard to get any yards. Especially when your opponent knows you're going to pass. And that that's pretty much he goes ahead and settles for three here. As he runs just any play. Winds up a lot of time in the pocket, but Vic gets sacked. So because Fournette didn't get enough yards to get inside the 10 there, he goes ahead and settles for his three. Boom. Bang, bang, bang. And the next drive for my man, I'll show you one of these dots that my man Deliverance pulled out of his ass down here on the goal line. Well, like I said, he was just read option, a lot of read option, a lot of drags and slants over the middle, mixing the table route. But he gets down here. He's up 7-3, to three, so, I mean, he's feeling good. A field goal puts it up to another a seven-point game. So chaos is, or uh, deliverance would feel he'd be all right ten to three, but he gets down here to a third and three. I think this is the one where he throws the back one. Uh, chaos is actually usually Troy Apke. We saw about Troy Apke making tackles for uh, deliverance, but right there Beckham catches in front of Apke, holds on. Chaos, as you can see in the picture, he wants an incompletion. Does not get that incompletion. He goes ahead and gets a first and goal. He runs the ball. He gets to a third and goal. Now, this was a crazy dot right here. 
deliverance will put um, many slants on the field, but what he does is a deep in route here, which would be cool. I wish he would have had a flat route over here to pull this flat zone away. There really is no flat. I guess it's cover two, and he actually fits that in there, catches it with Tyree Kill. Crazy fit right there. I know chaos. As you can see, chaos is sick. Deliverance is telling him that's a dot, man. I drew that up. Deliverance is girlfriend there. Very hype, very happy for him, as she is at every Madden tournament. So, you know, he he that was a dot. That was a big play to go up to 14 to 3, 14 to 3 right now. That's huge. And what what happens is chaos after doing the pick six, he went down, got his three. He's still in the game. He's still a great offensive player, so he has to go down here and get some type of points to make it a one possession game here. Drives down the field fairly easily, actually using that trips tight end. He winds up getting his field goal. So it's it's whatchamacallit. 14 to 6 at halftime. Second half, he gets this crazy pick on Deliverance's first drive to go ahead and, and get the ball back. So that said, he was down 14 to 3. Now he kicked that field goal at halftime, made it 14 to 6. Gets the pick in Deliverance's first drive. So he has the ball back in field goal range right now. Obviously, he wants to pick it. He wants to, whatchamacallit. He wants to get seven here to tie the game up. Maybe go for two and tie the game up. But what happens is he gets. First down, he runs, and then he goes. He eventually gets to uh, gets to a third and twelve here, and you'll see Deliverance play a little bit wild defense right here. And this is what we talk about. Uh, actually, all I wanted to show you guys this sneaky thing that Deliverance did. This sneaky little rat Deliverance. Now this is now this is like kind of like this is like we talk about baseball, the unwritten rules. Where you know you can't what you can't steal if you're up eight runs in the four. But you know you guys know the unwritten rule. You can't steal if you're up eight with seven minutes left. If you're running out the clock in basketball, you can't shoot and get those extra points. Unwritten rules. And as there's a code of man players, the unwritten rules of hiding on players because there's no identifier. We all grew up in an era where you're playing next to the person, so you always see who they're using. You know, so people can't just sneak and be on somebody. So when you're playing online, I'm 31. If you play other people, then, you know, it's kind of a rule. Like, you really don't lurk on people. You don't hide on players. Because some people might hide on a corner, run, commit. You don't see them. Things like that. The, the online error, it's kind, of, it's kind of a strategy a little bit. But as an old school player, you find it kind of cheesy and kind of like an unreal rule. You don't really hide on players. But you got to use the fact that there is no identifier. You don't know who you're using and what – he gets to a third and 12 here, and what, what uh, Deliverance does is he actually clicks on this outside corner here. And he's going to use her this corner, but he hides it because he doesn't move at all before the snap. Like, you'll see him click on this corner while Chaos is doing his hot routes, and he'll hide there, this flat zone. He ran with, ah, you know, I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to be on Apke. I don't want to be on Pat Pete. He goes ahead down here on uh, the, the slot corner because he made up Pat Pete Brown. He doesn't move. He wants to hide. The, he doesn't want Chaos to know he's on this corner because he's still there, and you don't see it anywhere. So he's on this corner. He's got the flat. Both guys are open. Michael Vick running to his left overthrows that. And, I mean, I've always been a, been a person to say, you know, shoot. Vick, and he's, like I said about chaos, he got the pouty he got the pouty face of all pouty faces all the time. <laughs> but this is the thing with Michael Vick. He's going to hit that nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten, Michael Vick hits that and – I would be upset about that, too, because, I mean, obviously you could say he was running, but he's running to his left. That's his strong hand. That's what you have Michael Vick to be able to make those throws. So he definitely kind of got a hold on that right there. Should have been a first down, but he kicks another field goal. Just stay in the game. You're playing deliverance. You're going to be in the game. He's not going to go ahead and score 30 points. This is going to be around a 20-point game. 20, you get 20 points, you can win the game. So just kick your points, stay alive, keep going. So he settles for three there. <sighs> now you now deliverance next drive he's going to come out here and he's going to get bagged. That's what's going to happen. He goes ahead, he runs, gets a couple little runs. You know he's going to stick to his runs, but he gets to a second and ten here, and I think Chaos covers the middle of the field and actually gets a real good scream off the edge, sacks him. Now I will show you another thing about right here. Deliverance is pretty much <laughs> read option or level sales play coming back across the middle. And here on third and 17, what he's going to do is he's going to audible the bunch. Now, if I'm playing a person that I just runs level sales and runs read option and he audibles the bunch randomly, I mean, there's only one play he's running. It's bunch verticals. So he's going to motion out the wheel route. And the thing he does here, now, that, now it's, I don't think it's that big a deal, but his outside receiver, he puts him on a slant. You see a lot of people put him on a drag. 
And what the slant does, he loves slants. He hot routes the shit out of slants. If you watch him play, and we're going to shoot, because he wins this game, if you guys want to, he wins this game, he's going to play Lawrence, and he hot routes the shit out of slants. He loves the slant, but what the slant does is going to run deeper. Pause. <laughs> it's going to run deeper. It's not going to be here shallow across the line of scrimmage. It's going to run close over here to where his uh, strong safety is. So what's going to happen because he put a slant instead of a drag, He's gonna the slant's gonna run right kind of into the user. Now, obviously, this plays pretty bagged, bagged the way it is. If you're gonna lurk over here, the crossing route, the wheel route, he's just gotta lurk this whole area. He doesn't have to go anywhere else because the slant is gonna run right into him. If he was on a drag, he could hit the drag right here and get half of this. But if you put him on a slant, he loves slants. And as you see, this one user took away all three of these options, <laughs> and the cloud and the th cover three over here took away that. So just the the just a bad play. But, you know, like I said, that's a person that doesn't run bunch. You don't see him run bunch. You got to know the difference between a drag and a slant. It's a huge difference, especially going across the field. One's at 10 yards and one's still at one yard. A drag right there, he could have thrown and got to maybe a fourth and eight, fourth and nine, which we'll see him do a little bit later in the game, take his take half the yards on a third and long. So Chaos was able to bag him there. Fourth and 17, you're up five points. You're going to go ahead and punt. So... He's going to punt. You need a good punt here. You're on your 39. And Deliverance has, I mean, a hell of a punt. Look at that. He goes from the 39, gets him down to the 18-yard line. This is when chaos starts cooking with gas. This is when you start looking at, at when I talk about one of the best offensive players, Man 19, this is when he really starts cooking. He pretty much goes right down the field. And he goes, and he goes ahead and, and gets seven. You know, he doesn't take that much time off the clock. He's comfortable in the pocket. He's making reads all over the field. It's pretty much dot after dot during this drive because this was his best drive of the game. It was probably the, one of the best drives that I'm going to show you all day was how easily he went down the field here. Here he puts the fade to Sanders to just run off the deep zones. As you see Deliverance over here lurking on the left, he's just going to hit B. He's going to get his 20, 25 yards. Boom. That's a big dot. You don't want to get that up defensively against Tripp's tight end. Run with Fournette. And he gets one more big dot. I forget which one it is. Right here, the post over the middle. Boom. This is his best drive of the game. And then he goes ahead and gets inside. He's at the 23-yard line now. But eventually he gets third and four on the 20. I think he throws it to Barry Sanders. First and goal. I don't know exactly when he scores. He throws a dot right there. Gets to the one-yard line. I believe he just runs it in. Does he sneak it? Uh, gets to a third and goal. I forget exactly what he does to get in the end zone, but he scores a touchdown. And this is his two-point conversion play. A lot of times when you want to go for two, you, you mash A, and the computer picks what play you're going to run. But this is tight. I've seen a lot of people do this this year with the two curls. I think, I mean, it's been really effective so far early in the year. He just goes to the one. And I think that's Rondé Barber picks it off. So he doesn't get his two-point conversion, which is huge. You always like to have a play there. And like I said, I don't know if that's the play he called or if that's the play Madden called for you. I know a lot of times you get stuck in that just jam A and, you know, cold suggestions, run stick from uh, under center tight slots. Boom, run stick. And that's what might have been what he ran, throw the high curl. God bless. You know, that might have been that might have been his, his two-point play. I'm not mad at it, you know. But like I said, I got picked off. So he's only up one point. Four minutes and 19 seconds left. It's, it, there's a lot of time left in this game. But maybe not for deliverance the way he's playing. Run, run, drag, run, run, drag, run, run, table route. You know, so four minutes, 19 seconds deliverance. You might be thinking this is the last drive of the game. Let's see how chaos kicks this ball off because that's a big deal. You know, he's going to go with he's going to go with the whatchamacallit. Well, he's going to have to wait. Wait for him to set, but he's going to go with the scum kick. And we'll see because this is his, I want to say this is his second to last kickoff of this game. We'll see how it goes for him. He high kicks it to Odell Beckham. One thing that Deliverance does, and he did it last year too, is he comes out on onside kicking audibles to kick return. This allows him to get an Odell Beckham there, get a Tyreek Hill in the fullback spot. So a scum kick like that goes to somebody that's fast. And that's going to come back to be a big deal later in this game that Deliverance is able to – um to get that player there to play that special teams. We talked about special teams as a part of, I mean, it's, oh, look at that play. Bounces off the first guy, which would have been five, six yards. Second guy catches it. That was pretty much the only fluky play in the last two club series, really, that went down. 
as you see here, we'll see it again. He throws just a little baby drag. It would have been complete. Would have been four or five or six yards. Instead, it's 12 yards. So you got to take that. But like I said, the field goal, being prepared on special teams is some deliverance was good at last year. And it's going to come in to really play a big part in uh, Chaos's special teams decisions. Because right there, the sc I, I believe the scum kick, he probably got him to like the 28, though. So it wasn't a bad scum kick. He really covered it very well. And it's definitely something that, that's going to come into play while well, I'll show you guys. This is why I talked about the game. That's he got bagged. Now, this is just terrible. This is terrible pocket presence. You know, you got a second and 12 here, right? Now, obviously, it looks like this looper is coming free. But you have second and 12. This is for your life. You're down now. You're not up anymore. So, one, you drift to the right. Drifting to the right, let me tell you something about loop. It, you got to get this Lawrence Taylor guy. You want him to get hung up over here. You know, you want him to get hung up on the tackle. You want him to get hung up on the, on the guard in the center. When he's looping around, you want him to trip over these guys. If you roll to the right, Lawrence Taylor's door to come get you just gets that much wider and that much easier. So th from the jump, this is just bad because everybody is pretty much blocked. If you roll to the left a little bit, Lawrence Taylor will bump into these guys, and hopefully someone will disengage and go block them. And this is why I talk about the wide 335 out is so good because it makes people panic. Now, honestly, as much as I say it's easy to roll to the left, this looks scary. This looks like Lawrence Taylor is coming to take my head off. You know, and so what happens is he, instead of, he just panics right here because his running back's boxed, A is boxed, and he's coming down to lurk this Y. So what he does is he panic. Well, actually, he didn't come down. He could have done Y. But even with him rolling to the right here, Lawrence Taylor is kind of hemmed up. But then once he, once he just escapes, boom, the contain gets him, and Lawrence Taylor does get him, and he gets sacked. He just lost 13 yards. Where if he stood in the pocket, he would have lost six yards. But just lost 13 yards, and now the drive is cooked. He's down one point. Chaos is cooking. He's killing him on offense. He's got the answer for the defense right now, and he just took a huge sack. So here we go. He's got a third and 25. And when we come to a third and 25, third and long, it's always like there's no 25-yard play, especially when protective sticks works. He motions his running back out, so he gets a blocker on both sides. That's a good job. Has plenty of time. Hits the playmaker dot. Gets a huge chunk of that 25 yards back. He goes from 20 to third and 25 to fourth and eight. That's a huge play, man. And you guys can learn a lot. Like when you have a, a big down like that, third and 25, that means you have two downs to get that 25 yards. And for him to go ahead and get, what, shoot, 17 yards on that play is huge. Takes it from an impossible down where you would almost consider punting to a down where fourth and eight is very manageable. And this, this, this is the play of Deliverance's life right here. I would never draw this play up. I don't know if you guys would draw this play up going home, at home. But uh, when I tell you two slants, he put two slants back to back. It's pretty much just quick slants, and, and he just got to pick one. There it is, right there. His money play for the Chi Loops. Level sale, double slant, Beckham, Tyreek Hill. At some point, Chaos got to put more yellow zones in the middle of the field. I feel just like a stock cover three with, like, play the sticks hard flats for the running back. There's just nowhere to throw this. But this is crazy right here that this is absolutely a dot. And, we, and, and we're going to see Deliverance throw these routes all day, just a slant, a drag, anything over the middle. You don't, and I hate throwing over the middle that much because that's where the user is. And you don't want to even play with the user. But you know what Deliverance, he says, my reads in the middle are so good, I will throw the user all day. And that's what he does. And that's what he does on this fourth and eight. So, I mean, he's sending out everybody. So someone's going, he's going to get pressure. Then we see Lawrence Taylor bumping into the center. He's got the tight end manned up. He's got the cover three on the moss. He's got a flat zone over here. He's got the running back. Everybody's taken away. It's pretty much chaos versus Y and B. Is Chaos going to pick right or is Deliverance going to pick right? That's this entire play. Are you going to pick right? Are you going to make the right read? At the last second, he's just going to throw the wide because he just – got to figure Chaos is going to drop back on B. I mean, these guys are so damn close that, I mean, Anthony Barr standing right here on the blue and, and red one is going to cover both of these. But like, like any sensible person kind of lurking – is going to go ahead and, and Chaos is going to drop off and be in Deliverance is going to throw wide. Boom, bang, first down. Never seen double stance slants work that well, but they damn sure work for that first down. That's a huge play. And, it, you know, you're just sick as a defensive person. Like, man, I just guessed the wrong way pretty much. 
So now one more first down, and Cass is going to go ahead and get into his timeouts. Oh, man, I'm on my the back page of this. Now what happens is Deliverance, go ahead and run that. He's going to take this one to the two-minute warning. Got an interesting call that he comes down here and makes the second and 13. He Does he take another sack? Yeah, he takes another sack, which is just a br – I want to see this one. Just – I mean, he got – I can't lie. He got absolutely screamed at this play, though. Chaos was not. I think this is sending six. Everybody's manned up. And, and like I said, Deliverance consistently sent out six people and was cool with it and didn't try to block. But right here, he just got absolutely – there's just nothing, nowhere for him to throw, throw the ball. Everybody's boxed. Huge sack to knock you out of field goal range right there. Now you get to a third and 19. Not only do you want to try to get this first down, you would love to get back into field goal range. And that's that's pretty much what his goal is right now. And we'll go to another play. I wish to show me this. So now we got this crossing route. We have a deep end route. You got to know if he's in 3-3-5 three, three, odd, you're probably not going to be able to throw this deep end route. So it's going to come between the slant and X. And once again, we're going to throw right at Chaos's user. Like, just pick the right one. It's pretty much this what it's going to come down to. You got the whole middle of the field. What's going to happen? So he's got good pocket right here, and he just throws the other one. <laughs> he makes the right read. It's as simple as that. Chaos, once again, if he get, if Chaos guesses right one time, this game's over. But, bang, he was just a little too slow right there. Tyreek Hill gets him in the field goal range, calls his chaos calls timeout, knowing that he's probably going to kick this field goal. Now, me, the way chaos just played offense, you got to go for this because it's not a situation where you want, you need to score a touchdown. All you need to do is get another first down, and the game is over. He just used the timeout, another first down, he's going to use that, and you're going to kick a field goal to win the game, period. You need a two-yard play. It's not a two-yard play from the two-yard line. It's a two-yard play from the 32, so you still have the whole field to open up with zones it's not it's not compact you can go ahead and cook up a dot i mean you've been thrown over the middle all day <sighs> and because of the way chaos is playing offense i mean you can you know he's gonna get down the field and probably get a field goal and that's something you know you don't want to live with me personally i would go for this because i feel like i can get a play and end the game right here i don't have to worry about playing defense i kick a field goal he kicks a field goal he wins and that that's pretty much how it goes so for me i am going to go for this easily but what happens is my man deliverance says no i'm gonna go ahead and kick so he kicks this field goal makes the field goal special teams matter boom now this if you're chaos no matter what happens i do a pick six michael vick overdo a pass he do it my user seven times and he kept keeps dotting me no matter what you have the ball right now with a minute and 22 seconds and two timeouts with trips tight end your offense is very good and, you know, any man player pretty much would take this situation. Two timeouts, a minute 22, you have a lifetime of time. And all you need is a field goal to win the game, not tie the game, to win the game. You get a field goal, you win the game. Almost too much time, really. Just want to see Kate. my man Deliverance. You know he's prepared on special teams. Hits him with a scum kick to Barry Sanders. And this is the first down play. Apke knocks it out of his hands. Troy Apke, he, Cass is one guy that, I mean, Deliverance really had Troy Apke in a cloud flat, really playing really well. For my belief, I want to say, I uh, guess a little dot over there. And he gets to a third and five here. The time is running out. I, yeah, this is the play right here. So right now, you're chaos. You're thinking if I get, when I get in the field goal range, this game's over. There's nothing he can do. He can't ice me. He can't, unless I go out of bounds or stop the clock, he can't ice me because I'm just going to come out and field goal on first down, and then he can't ice me, and I'll be able to kick my field goal with no ice and win the game 18 to 17, period. That's what he would do. So what happens is he he draws up a great play, puts Barry Sand. This is why I use Barry Sand. Puts him on a curl. He knows that Tyreek Hill is going to get open. He motion blocks, so he has plenty of time. Once again, Deliverance is on that corner, covers the corner route. He gets a playmaker right there, hits the playmaker inbounds, gets down. Game is over, but he calls timeout. I, what? You just weren't prepared to get in the field goal range. That's all it was. You know, you just you didn't have – it's kind of like a baseball player where you always – the way you play baseball is you always assume that they're going hit to the, hit the ball to you. So you always have to know what you're going to do when you get the ball. So essentially when you're playing Madden, you got to always know what you're going to do 
when when something happens. You know, if I catch this ball and bounce, I'm the game's over. You know, I'm just going to come out because the only way I, I don't get iced, if I got to come out and field goal on first down, he has all three timeouts. So for me not to get iced, I have to come out and field goal on first down. So the move for him right there would go ahead and let the clock run, come out and field goal right away. Right away, just instantly, even with 30 seconds, come out and field goal, get ready to kick your field goal. And if he lets you start the meter without icing you, start the meter, you kick your field goal. So what he does is bang, calls his timeout right there. And I don't know when he realized that that was just terrible. My man Deliverance, you know, he like, all right, you want to let me stay in the game? I'll stay in the game. So after he calls the timeout, this is when Chaos is realizing, like, damn, I'm going to let him get the ball back or I'm going to let him ice me, one or, one or the other. So now he's going to go ahead and run run the ball. Now you have to get this first down. So Deliverance is, hey, bam, I'm going to get the ball back. So this mistake by him, by Chaos burning the timeout rate, like panicking and calling timeout for some reason, that's going to allow Deliverance to get the ball back in a situation where he never should have got the ball back. The, the, it should be a game-winning field goal for Chaos, 18-17. to 17, He moves on to the finals. But because of that timeout, he's going to go ahead and keep running because you need to get this first down now. That's a huge tackle by Moore right there. Uh, just a little thing, like people don't see the play that Moore made. And we talk about this all the time with, with the safeties and the, the safeties at linebacker. And he has Apke and Moore like pretty much everybody else. I don't know who Chaos's guard is. I don't have good guards. I don't know who has good guards. His left guard here, more bounces. He gets blocked so good that he's off of the guy right there, comes back and makes the tackle. That's that's a game-winning tackle for, for deliverance right there. But now you get to a point where you're sec third and one. Mind you, you just ran the ball twice in obvious run situations, and you're at third and one. Now, I almost thought he put this on aggressive. I'm assuming he went on conservative. I'm saying I'm assuming he – I, I, there's no chance he went on aggressive. If he went on aggressive, chaos got to be the dumbest human being alive, in my opinion. Like, I, I just, there's no, to, to go on aggressive here, because at the end of the day, regardless of what happens and the terrible mistake you made with your timeout, you you have you have an 18 to 17 lead, regardless. Even if you get stopped here, you lose 10 yards here, you still have the lead. To risk the fumble to try to get this extra yard is incredibly stupid, in my opinion. Because at the end of the day, of all the shit that happened in this game, if I get an 18 to 17 lead and you have no timeouts and 20 seconds left, I'm fine with that. But for him to risk the fumble for this extra yard to just seal, to just run off, to run off the rest of the game, which isn't that much game left, but for him to risk the fumble by putting this on aggressive is just crazy to me. Especially. I believe he calls fullback dive too, but I I just think it's not it's not worth because if you fumble right here, regard obviously playing on aggressive with Fournette and all that has been pretty amazing so far, especially since the last patch. But for me, I would never do this because it's just it's just allowing the opening. So you you do all this and he was going to run a fullback dive to Fournette. Now mind you, his shotgun run and his dive against three, against Deliverance three three five odd has have dominated. So for me to go under center, no, I don't know how I feel about goal line in, the, in this situation. And Deliverance blows that up. He blows it up. And he gets a good hit on him too, really. If that wasn't just a shitter linebacker, I think that's what it is. Who knows? Yeah, he might have been trying to make up for – for because he knows if he gets his first down, he don't got to hear about calling that timeout. But it gets blown up. Deliverance used last timeout 25 seconds. So Cass okay, gonna go ahead and kick his field goal and take his 18 to 17 lead. Now I talked about Deliverance being able to all the ball out of onside kick, being able to uh, put himself in a position position to have his best players catch the scum kick, and we'll see what Cass Cass knows that because you see him all the ball out of onside kick, something he's done for the last two matches to get his best player at the scum spot, and I believe what what Cass does is he kicks it straight deep. I don't remember. He does kick it deep because Tyreek Hill catches the ball at the goal line, and then the magic happens. Perfect blocking. Donovan McNabb blocks Troy Apke, and the fastest player on the field, Tyreek Hill, wins the game for deliverance. Bang. So chaos, knowing that he – I don't even want to say he kicked this wrong, and that's a man that right there is just – 25 seconds, I feel like, oh, man – it's tough, and him not getting a two-point conversion was huge. 
him settling for field goals was huge to be the point where he was down. He was only up one point. But this, let's go back to exactly how he kicked this ball. He goes normal kick. He literally just kicked it normal. Now, this is what I say. Now, I don't, I, I understand why you would kick it normal. I understand why you wouldn't want to kick it out of bounds. You wouldn't even want to risk kicking it out of bounds. I understand why you would kick deep in this situation. I truly do. I'm not, I mean, obviously, in hindsight, you would love a squib kick or a kick, scum kick. Some, with so many scum kicks in the game, that's probably the direction you should have went. But if you commit to kicking it deep, that's fine. You got to commit to it. And if you're going to kick it deep, this is for your life. Deliverance has shown you nothing that he's going to dot down the field in 20 seconds with no timeouts and score a touchdown. My man has done slants in the middle of the field the entire game. That's it. There's been no route to the sideline, nothing that's going to allow him to get out of bounds. So he, he has nothing for me. All I have to do is cover this kick. He's not an offensive guru. He's not, I mean, it's, it's not the first time somebody's ever seen Bill Walsh's offense. You're going to be able to cover the sidelines. You're going to be able to stop him. So you have to cover this kick. So if you choose to kick deep, that's fine. Boom. You got to have a better user on your kick return. I just This is the thing that, that drove me through the roof is that if you do this, you got to have some type of user. I, and, you know, some people click on the kicker, move the kicker in a different lane, move some player back. Whatever you may do on a kickoff, you got to do it. A lot of times you'll click on the linebacker, swerve so it doesn't get blocked, mess up the block angles. You'll you'll keep it contained. Whatever you whatever your idea is on, on field goals, you have to do something with your user. You know, and his user is just – he might as well not be on – this might as well be a Madden kick return, like the computer. Because you see him, he's on the kicker, runs into the left a little bit, clicks on that guy, clicks on that guy, clicks on that guy. Eventually, he's on that. He, it literally has no user this entire play, none at all. So if you're going to kick deep, be prepared to cover the deep kick. Simple as that. One, you made a mental mistake by calling the timeout. You made a mental mistake by kicking it deep in that situation. Then you had zero user on the kickoff. So all them, all them things compound the problem. Deliverance gets the win. Special teams mean a lot, man. And you, you got to really – obviously, we all hate kick return. It's a fluky play. No one can control who Black says when they don't. But you can definitely control how you kick the ball, where you kick the ball, and certainly how you use it. My, the last thing I'm going to question on chaos, it, obviously, deliverance goes for two here for some – yeah. The last thing I'm going to question is this is – you have one timeout, eight seconds, and he's high kicking to Barry Sanders right here, and you fair catch. Now, if you have a crazy dime dot super bomb play, then okay, I understand this. Because you did a touchdown, buddy. You got eight seconds and, and one timeout. One, if, if Deion Sanders gets caught, you're still going to have a play. If it was three seconds, I, mean, I think your best opportunity to score right here is with Barry Sanders on a kick return. But he calls fair catch at the 18, throws a little out route, then he concedes and runs the ball and tries to get the fluky run. So, I mean, well, that's just little things where, man, oh, man, just just a crazy mental mistake at the end calling a timeout. Kicking it off, having no user on the kickoff, giving up a kick return is something that's going to sit with him for a long time. <sighs> that's just how it is. But I've always talked over how he settled for threes in the first half and got him in that situation, but – Deliverance just fought, stayed alive, and he, like I said, if you leave the door open for the fluky, the fluky will kick the door down, and it caused, and, and I mean, the kick return just allowed my man Deliverance to keep moving. But uh, Chaos lost the game. That's probably as bad as someone can lose a game, honestly, and he lost it. But shout out to Deliverance for making plays when he needed to, going ahead, securing his field goal there before uh, before the Chaos is driving. It was definitely a, definitely was a, a good win for him. And where I'm at now, got all these damn notes. Bang. So that moved Deliverance into the finals against Lawrence, the player that demolished Ish. Ish just threw another pick. That's how bad Ish versus Lawrence was. So we'll move on to my man Lawrence versus Lawrence versus Deliverance. This is what I call the drag slant. This is the drag slant game because my man Deliverance just peppered him with drag slant over the middle. Lawrence, I mean, Lawrence, like I said, we, we haven't seen Lawrence before. We've seen Deliverance. We've seen Ish. We've seen Chaos. We haven't seen Lawrence. Apparently, Lawrence was a football player, and now he's a pretty damn good man player, you know. Yeah, the Chaos, chaos was uh, definitely uh, – 
a rough one. But honestly, with bunch tight end, my man Deliverance went right down the field, or Lawrence went right down the field. He, uh, Lawrence went right down the field running bunch tight end. You can see a lot of times on offense, you should be able to score your first possession because a player like, uh, you know, maybe they don't necessarily see what you're doing. They've got to get comfortable defending you. Sometimes defense gets better as the game goes on, or sometimes offense gets better as the game goes on. This game, in my opinion, the offenses went right down the field. It was 7-7 before you could blink. And Lawrence did a great job of pretty much just mixing in playmaker hitch, curls in the middle of the field, as you see right there, bunch tight end, the post routes, the corner routes. He really much – pretty much every play Lawrence ran, he had a small little check down either like a drag or a slant or a hitch that he could playmaker along with a deep post route, as you see right here, that the user had to cover. That was his whole offense out, out of bunch tight end. It was either motion, motion a corner route over, make it a post, motion a post over, make it. A, this was it. As you see right here, a streak, the post route, and the hitch. So bang, he has time in the pocket all day, waits for you to commit. He throws it up right there to Steve Smith, gets a great animation. That's that was pretty much his entire offense out of bunch tight end. Mixed in a run a little bit, but that was it. There was nothing really that special. Just mixed. He mixed up what player was on a hitch and what player was on a uh, post very well. That's what kind of made it hard. And he had a lot of success, scored a touchdown on his first drive. My man Deliverance, you know, he went right down the field running his read option and actually scrambled in the end zone with McNabb. So that, that would eventually make it 7-7. Seven to seven. Now, my man, whatchamacallit, 7-7. Seven seven. Then Lawrence eventually gets the ball back. As you see, McNabb is going to scramble in here for Deliverance. 7-7. Seven seven. Lawrence gets the ball back, continues to drive down the field. And this is this is probably oh no we gotta be back a little bit more. First and ten goes and runs the ball, gets nothing. He's in field goal runs here, and you'll see Lawrence just takes a terrible sack. I don't necessarily know if it was bad pocket. If it was, the one thing about Lawrence compared to everybody else, he had Aaron Rodgers, so you don't have the mobility. You don't have the mobility to go ahead and, and get out of trouble. You don't have the mobility to go ahead and get 10 yards. You have Aaron Rodgers, who has probably, what, 75 speed maybe at the most. He goes, same type of thing, Dre. He has time. He has plenty of time. Stay in the pocket like a champ. He drops back 10, 12 yards and gets sacked by a player that fell on the ground, got up, and came and tackled him. That kills you because right now you're out of field goal range that you just worked hard for. You were playing great offense. You take that sack. Bang, knock you out of field goal range. And the next play, you've got to figure the deliverance. It looked like he's going to bring six at me. I have to get rid of the ball. Hopefully, somehow get get my way back in the field goal range. Ah, shoot. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. Oh, we're back to the. Now, I just want to show I just want to show you guys this play art, honestly. Third and 21. Me, personally, I'm getting back in field goal range. I, the, my idea of getting this first down is cooked, pretty much. I'm cooked. I just want to get back in field goal range. I'll show you guys which one of these routes is getting you back in the field goal range that you can draw quickly with him sending six people at you. If this was a hitch, maybe, but a 10-yard curl, this screams to me because if you play the sticks on third, say you play the sticks on third and 21, this post, this post route is never getting open. So for me, if I'm going into a play offensively third and 21, I, I got to think that this post route is never going to get open. So the only thing I had to throw is this curl route. None of these routes scream, let me get five yards and get my field goal. I don't know what they scream or what what he's trying to do on this play. Obviously, he wants to hit this post, but it, a, a play like that's not going to be open with the protect the sticks feature that I wish was in the game for a long time. He sends six at him, comes off the edge. Boom, he's cooked. Now he has to punt the ball. Boom. But the one thing about Lawrence, he does punt the ball very well. I believe he punts this thing inside the 10-yard line, I believe. Six-yard line. Yeah, that's a crazy punt. That's definitely worth it. I mean, if you want to have the punt, you know, and that's definitely uh, – and this is where Deliverance really just adapted his scheme. That's it right there, folks. Write it down. This is a free ebook. I guarantee you nobody can run this game as good as Deliverance. As as an as a, as a offensive player, as somebody that feels like I, I, I put the right – I freestyle very well. I know how to put the right routes on the field. I know how to use my routes to open up zones. I know how to, you know, get people open in zone. I think this shit is ugly. I think there's no way in hell a sane human being can run this and, and, and be effective in Madden. 
Because to me, this just, like, <laughs> like I, I, I can't get over how ugly I think this is. Like, there is no setup. Where like you see you buy an ebook and or you go to YouTube money plays and they say, All right, just call this play, put a slant, a drag, and two drags and and an in route. And honestly, I feel like he hot route he hot routed every player. And and literally t- my man deliverance calls this play just for the table route. Cause he really doesn't use any of the other routes on the field. He just uses the table route. That's all. So he calls this for the table route. And the thing about – and I, when we were in the chat, we were in the Discord watching, and I'm just laughing. Like, this is the worst-looking offense in the world. But the thing about Deliverance is that that he never made a wrong read on this. Like, he, he done ran two drags, a slant, and an in route so many times that he makes the right read every time. And it's crazy. And that's what he did to Lawrence. He ran this a setup like this. Pretty much the main setup he ran was just a drag to the tight end and a slant to the inside receiver. And he picked the right one every time. And it was crazy, but he literally did pick the right one every time. Oh, he put a slant. Oh, he put a streak. He put two two streaks. Now, this is another thing I want to ask. Uh, two streaks. Because, I mean, uh, Deliverance got to have conductor the way he hot routes every player on the field. So he's put two streaks right next to each other. I want to know, what, what's the point of the two streaks? But he hits the little drag beside him. Why do we put two streaks right next to each other? Now, I'll tell you, he will do this, I, I probably this set up four or five, six, seven times in this game. Guess to a third and three. He's going to audible. And you know he's going to drag to the tight end, slant to Tyreek Hill. It gets to the point where, I mean, I would just be covered three hard flat with seven yellow zones in the middle of the field. Once again, picks the right read, but he gets hit right there. Boom. So he gets to a fourth and three. I mean, listen, my man Deliverance is going to trust the process. He's going to go out here. He's going to put his drag. He's thinking about it. Like, am I going to switch up who's going to be on the drag? Am I going to switch up who's going to be on the slant? I mean, he trusts what he has going on here. You know, and like I said, if I'm Lawrence, I'm definitely uh, doing them two streaks right next to each other. None of those guys are an option. And Lawrence, I mean, dude, what I want to know is how do we allow this man to run the same play, this basic boo-boo play so many times in a row? I want to see the play art again. God damn. So he gets to the line. Now, it's crazy. It's crazy that, ah, oh, damn, the two slant. Like, when are these two streaks ever an option is what I want to know. Like, I like to come into a play and kind of have two or three people to throw the ball to. Not five because I think five would be, like, overkill. But he has the two outside guys on streaks, which they're never option. He's going to throw these two people. And Lawrence, for some reason, once again, just guards the whole middle of the field by himself. I mean, it's not hard if you're going to leave the whole middle of the field wide open. You know, what? to me, I, I don't even think you ever need a flat zone over here with the first deliverance. This, this part of the field is not getting thrown to. His read is flat middle sack or flat middle playmaker. These guys aren't getting thrown to. But once again, he picks the right one. He dots him again with that same setup. He goes down the field with the read option and the two slants. <coughs> what does he get on his drive? Let me see. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the move he made out of bunch. The, the play to uh, Tyree Kill. Huge play right here, actually. I mean, this is what you want. If you want to throw a slant and a drag, you're going to make him pay. He actually put an in route here. Sent six wide open underneath. Hit him with the one cut up and then a spin off the corner. Tyreek Hill has the speed to take it to the crib. That was a huge play, man. And if you're going to go ahead and throw slants and drags, every once in a while you got to turn one of your short routes into something like that. Great user by him to go up, get a touchdown out of that. Now he's kicking off. And this is this is a spot where, obviously, you're pissed. If you're Lawrence, you're, you're upset that you just gave up three. Giving that up was – or you gave up seven, boom. That was – especially a player just chucking slants and drags and you wind up getting one of them to get seven. You get uh, – actually, who gets the ball? <clears throat> oh, the deliverance actually gets the ball. So you're pressing. If you're Lawrence, you're definitely pressing right now to get some points. And what you always have to know as a man player, man, you can't win the game in the first half. But you certainly can lose the game in the first half, you know. It's definitely something that, that you can do. He has great protection here. 
Hits. Ooh, good lurk right there by uh my man uh Deliverance. But so on and so forth. Actually, what happens is my man throws a pick. Not bad because it's ten seconds. You're not normally now. How many times do we have a situation? You guys have caught a lot of picks in Madden. Never does the the safety or the corner just magically not trip over anybody and turn around and get a turbo and start running. So I, that's why I'm not mad at him chucking the ball up here to try to make something happen. But as you see, Apke just turns around and just starts dipping. Apke's dipping. And so he gets all the way to, the, what, the 46-yard line. Needs one dot to get into field goal range. One dot. He has all his timeouts. So this is definitely a situation where I think we're so – Man, it's just it's tough that we're so caught up in this loop defense, this three through five odd, and we're so caught up in the meta defenses, the meta offenses and stuff. Sometimes you just gotta freestyle on defense. And this is a situation where you, I don't think you would run the ball. You know, because you're just you're just hoping a run can get you five yards. But to me, I'm I'm not really rushing that many people. That's why I'm thinking would I drop everybody and just pray that he didn't run. But my point is he can throw the ball anywhere. He can throw the ball in flat. He has all three timeouts. He can throw a slant. He can throw whatever he wants. You getting pressure you getting pressure on him isn't I did that important here because all he's looking for is a quick pass. You know, and I feel like the blitz in this situation kind of plays into his hand. To where it's like, okay, if I blitz you, you're already looking for the quick pass. The blitz is susceptible to the quick pass, and that's what you're looking for. Whereas if you play situationally, maybe this is a time where you hit him with a three-man rush. You hit him with a little cover two with, with three yellow zones over the middle of the field. You hit him with two-man under with your DNs and flat zones or DNs and yellow zones. You hit him with all-out coverage because you know in his mind he's getting rid of the ball fast so he can get five, six more yards and call timeout. That's where somewhere where you would go ahead and, and definitely switch up your defense instead of staying in the same predictable loop, which is great all game because it, it applies a lot of pressure and makes you really think and makes you get rid of the ball fast. But right here, I don't know if that's the ideal defensive call. And if I if it was, I would definitely I would probably drop a lot of people just so he didn't have any easy lanes. Because even a drag, a hitch, a curl, anything over the middle field with his three timeouts is going to result in a field goal. So I would put as much covers on the field as possible, honestly, in this situation. But as you see right here, I think he's rushing four. I think he just he just double flat that left side. Yeah, let's see what he got. It looks like he has double flats over here to the left. Probably for a corner route, out route. Hard flat here, a quarter here. I mean, it's not terrible. Half here so he doesn't get bombed. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind this looper being in the yellow zone. I think in this situation that this yellow this guy's more more valuable to you in coverage than he is looping around. You know, what happens is he has the whole middle of the field, he guards that, he just hits great play, boom, gets down, timeout, field goal goes up. So that's just definitely something that, that I would think about playing the game situationally, not being in love with the loop all the time, not being in love with blitzing all the time. Just have a mind for the game. Have a mind for what your opponent wants to do. Great job by Deliverance. Cooking up that dot, finding a hole right there, hitting it. He gets the ball at half, 17-7, to seven, getting the ball at half for the Pittsburgh Steelers Club Series Championship. Got to be feeling good. Got to be feeling that this drive, take some time off the clock, get some points. But even if you don't get points, boom. Even if you don't get points, you go ahead and – uh. You're still up 10 points. You're still up two possessions. So you're feeling good regardless of what happens here because you're still up 10. Don't turn the ball over. Don't give up nothing easy. And you're in a great position to win this game. You know, Lawrence has had two drives and one you stopped him very well. And the, the last one with no time on the clock, you picked him off. So that's pretty much uh, how it's going to go. And Deliverance runs this read option. Now, I haven't seen nobody really cleanly shoot the gap on a read option. Like, you see people shoot the gap on base or they shoot the gap on inside zone. This read option just, I have not seen people shoot the gap on this. The most I've seen people do is come around the edge, like the backside edge, like read option would, and tackle them. That's the most success I've seen. Here we go. Deliverance, this is just nice little throw underneath the Beckham. He goes with his, t that time he didn't even use the table route. He just, uh. He just go ahead and throw the little drag right there. He gets to a third and five right here. 
I believe this is the play where he just stands in the pocket like a champ. And this is the thing about the loop, man. If it gets blocked, and this isn't even a loop, he just holds his water, holds his water, holds, steps up a little bit, hits the playmaker, dot, Beckham with a one-hand catch. Great pocket right there by Deliverance. He's 10 for 11 right now, just dotting the hell out of Lawrence. He's playing really good offense. Now he's back in field goal range. So you're looking at 20 to 7 regardless. Go ahead and run the ball, mix it in a little bit. But I think he's going to run here. The one thing about deliverance, then I would give, then he gets stopped or he gets blown up on a run. The little block shot right there. The one thing about deliverance, as opposed to we're going to watch J Wall next game. But the one thing about deliverance, as opposed to everybody else, is he only motions when he runs. This is something, if I'm playing deliverance, you're motioning, you're getting close to a run commit. Because every time he passes, he never motions. Whereas most people, you see Chaos, you see Jay Wall, you see all these other trips tight end guys, they motion a lot. They motion a lot involved with both setups, and whether it's run or pass. But deliverance, when he motions, he's running that bitch. And if he doesn't motion, then he's passing. It's pretty much as simple as, as night and day with deliverance. There's just no in-between with his offense. It's either snap or motion snap the run or just snap with no motion if he's passing. And that's something you would, I would pick up on if I was, you know, preparing to play him. So whatever's in the AFC North, whether it be the Browns champion, Ravens champion, or the Bengals champion, it's something I would really pay attention to. And if I'm, I'm delivering, it's something that I really attempt to uh, get better with motioning when I need to pass. So now we got a, a – he's at 37-yard line. I talked about him going to be up 10 points regardless. So the, – but the three helps. You have to secure your three here. Because, you know, then it's going to force him to get two two touchdowns. It's, it, it, is, it is a big deal. It doesn't feel like a big deal because you, a field goal, a touchdown, you know, really wins this game for you. But it definitely uh, – it is a big deal that you get your points here. And he just plays great defense and deliverance gets sacked. Now, this is a position in the game where, where to me, I'm probably getting my boot out right here. The sack was – it was kind of fluky little shed. It's nothing really to complain about the sack. I, I really, I mean, the play was wild. You know, deliverance, two in routes, a drag, whatever it may be. But he was back. So this is a spot where I really wouldn't mind the punt because you just knocked yourself out of field goal range, which was a terrible sack to take. But he goes ahead and goes for it, and that's cool. I mean, whatever you may choose to do. I forget. There's something I didn't like about this. I mean, this is his main play right here, really, pretty much. Slant coming over middle, crossing route. The in route is really not going to be an option, I don't think. Ah, oh, this is just terrible. He would have had everything in the world if he stands in the pocket like a man. This is this is bad. This is uh, this is bad pocket. We talk about what 335 odd does to you. As good a pocket he had a couple plays before, this is terrible pocket presence. Because we'll see at the snap, there's nobody that's going to come free, man. He's sending six. Nobody's going to come get him if he just holds his water like a man in the pocket. You got these two guys, the tackle and the guard, going to get the two guys on the left. The guard in the center exchanged the loop fairly well. The tackle over here is on his guy. The, the, the cornerback comes in on a goofy contain and just does nothing. If you stand here by the S and Steelers, you'll have all day. Look at this guy. Look how far away he is from the quarterback. You'll have enough time to hit B, to hit Y, to hit the square end, to even hit this tight end fade or whatever, the streak, whatever. Everybody's going to be open. If you hold your water and just stand right here by the STE, and but he backs up, allows this DN to come around and sack him, really. You see, who else is going to get him? This guy's so far away, he's going to be able to hit one of these two routes for a first down. That's just bad pocket. And also, it also put Lawrence pretty much right back in field goal range. Like I said, in a 17-7 to game, I wouldn't mind the punt there. But if you're going to go for it, man, you got to execute a little bit better. Stand up in the pocket like a man. Deliverance didn't do that. So he turned the ball over. Boom. Devin gets a stop. Where we're at. Next page. Boom. All right. Do, 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 do. I, yo, I wish I knew my handwriting. Oh, he does call sell. Yeah, yeah, I know what he does here. Okay. So he's going to go ahead. He's going to move down the field. A couple dots here and there. What is his? he run here? He gets inside the, tw the 10 pretty easily. Throws his post over here to Steve Smith. Next play, I believe, he runs. He hits deliverance with some of his own medicine. He comes down here. He no huddles into this play. Level sale. We all know this is a pain in the ass inside the yard line. 
Throws it high to the deep in route in the middle guy. Catches the ball right there. 17 to 14. He's what you call. He's right back in the game. And that drive was impressive to me because let me tell you that to me the you know the hardest drive to have is when you're down two scores in the second half of a big game. You know you don't. You know, most people like to panic. Most people like to try to force things. I want to get points real quick. I want to, you know, keep the game moving, or I want to get back in the game as fast as possible. But Lawrence actually had a great drive there. He mixed it up very well. He threw underneath. He threw, you know, deep posts, whatever it may be. He definitely moved down the field, being down 10 points with a lot of calm. And what helped that was the fact Deliverance got, took a sack and gave him the ball already on, in, in Deliverance territory. And as you see right here, Deliverance go ahead and fumbles the kickoff. So I feel like well, my, my point being there is that by taking the sack, by taking the sack and turning the ball over for deliverance, it just it, it was a sense of relief for Lawrence. Whereas if he would have punted, pinned him inside the 10 again, it would have made Lawrence speed up even more being down 10. But neither, nevertheless, my man Lawrence is going to go ahead and uh, he's going to keep running. He's going to keep playing well. And what he's going to do here is actually going to hit a streak right here, to, uh, Tyreek Hill. I don't see – obviously, we all use the fade. I don't see too many people stick with a, with a streak right here. The fade would have been open too, but he hits him first play after the fumble. Touchdown, 21-17, just like that. Lawrence is in the lead. So, boom. And you'll see they're just yelling back and forth a little bit. I wish they just had the mics on them instead of whoever was doing the game. So we're back to the read option show with uh, my man um, Deliverance. Back to the slant in, in verticals. He's able to actually have enough time to hit the crossing route. But he drops it there. Gets to a third and nine. I believe this is, yeah, third and nine. He Like I said, he was just up ten. Now he's down four. The game is getting very, very dark. And what's going to happen here is we're going to go with it, which is a streak in a corner route, a little hitch, playmaker come over, and Deion Sanders in a three-wreck just wasn't having that. That was a crazy jump right there because I felt like it was three. I think felt like it was shaded off with Deion Sanders. He playmakered him, and just boom, Deion Sanders jumped down and picked it off. So Lawrence right here, like I said, Lawrence right here, the game is in his hands. You score a touchdown here, this is cooked. Deliverance, the slant drag combo with read option is not going to get you back into the two-score game and with one quarter left in the game. And what happens is Lawrence actually gets to a second and nine. And uh, what happens? First and ten. Eventually what happens is he gets to – see, this is the fourth quarter. You already had – you get, you punch this ball in, the game is over. You're cooked. You're the Steelers Club Series champion. Obviously, he's going to run here. He's going to mix in a little bit of run. That's fine. You know, a lot of people would run the ball here. I would definitely try to run the ball because I want to take at least enough a minute off the clock. But it gets blown up. And he gets to a third and 11. Now, what's crazy about Lawrence here and what's crazy about me is that he runs the ball here. And that's cool. Keep the clock running. But for me, I'm at least trying to dot because it's so big if I get – it's so big humongous in the game that if I get that touchdown that I'm at least trying to put a dot on the field. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to throw a pick. It doesn't mean you're going to throw an incompletion. It doesn't mean you're going to run out of bounds. It means you're going to try to dot. So a third and 11, although I don't, I don't mind the call, but it was just really passive and really uh, it just when you, you just wanted to see a little bit more sense of urgency from Lawrence right there to go ahead and uh, try to give himself a ch chance to end the game on his drive and go up two possessions. But he went conceded, took his three. That's perfectly fine. Dun, 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 dun. So then my man Deliverance down by seven. Can a drag and a drag and a slant get it done? Like I said, if he's motioning, he's running, period. Simple and plain. And I learned that in the first, first half of watching Deliverance play. If he's motioning, he's running. If he's not motioning, he's running level sail. Here, we, here it is again. Look, this time he's passing. We're not going to see any motion. He's just going to do his hot routes. He's blocking the running back now. He's going to make a read. Playmaker up. Laser over the middle. Odell Beckham back in field goal range, but the field goal is not going to get anything due. Not going to get anything done here. Bang. So he eventually, I don't know if this is where he gets to the fourth down. He'll be mixing a little out route out here to Beckham. Like I said, his eyes don't really go out here. His eyes stay right in the middle. It goes left. It's covered. We hit him over there. 
but he makes a huge tackle, Deion Sanders. Takes it to the two-minute warning, man. You want your running back to fight a little bit more than that, especially against Deion Sanders. But he gets to a fourth and three, man. So this is this is a tough spot. Fourth and three, you got to cook one up. I mean, like I said, he's been throwing over the middle all day. So I would assume he's going to throw over the middle. And this is another spot where I would I would get out of the stupid loop defense. Well, he did. He, he, he manned up tons of people. Baby dot over the middle. Oh, man. Did he not have anybody over there in the flat, Lawrence? Did he have to alert, alert the flat? Yeah, he had to alert the flat. Tough one, you had to alert the flat. And I, I want to say he manned that guy up. He did. That's the Look, what he does here is he mans up the loop on Y. He mans up the slot on B. Both of these guys get absolutely torched. This is one thing that makes defense so hard on this game is that when you man people up, they just <laughs> you might as well put them in spies, really. But here you go. He has no flat over here. That's what killed him this play. That's what killed him. That's absolutely what killed him because he had to lurk left and then that left in route. And he knows, man, I man these guys up. Why are they getting killed? Why are they getting offed? And, that, I mean, that's, that's part of the reason why defense is definitely hard. And the next, what does he go with? The next play. Those in the flats over here to Tevin Coleman, 92 speed. Hops over somebody, touchdown. Game is tied. Now, now this is, like I said, what I said about chaos last game, man, if you have timeouts, you need a field goal to win the game. Every man player in the world would take that. Uh, and so we got 133. That's This is a lifetime. Like, when I say lifetime, this is a lifetime. You have – time is not an issue at all. Once again, playmaker dot over the middle gets that. Now, this is where I like what Lawrence did here. You know, a lot of people think you're, you know, you're running out of time or you're under two minutes, so you got to speed everything up. But you don't at, at all, you know, because you're in the middle of the field. You have an eternity. All you really need in this situation is, is – 25 seconds, not a minute. So go ahead and run the ball. What's that going to do is just take some time off the clock because if he does get stopped right here, he does have to punt for some reason. Deliverance isn't going to have any time to score in regulation. So right now it's just a great job by him by almost milking in this situation rather than pushing it to the limit and going down as fast as you want. You see him flipping the play. I think he's actually going to take this under 10 seconds before he snaps. And it's just something that not a lot of players would do. They would be in such a hurry to get in the field goal range. But him going ahead and milking this was really just a veteran move, really. To, and this is crazy right here. What happens? Oh, man, I'm going to show you these guys, these plays. And that's Troy Apke there making the play right there for him, knock him out of field goal range. I want to show you this play art right here. Boom. He just has a flat, a flat and a slant combo to the left and a post over here to the right. So what happens is he's max protecting. Boom, he covers the slant. These zones aren't ran off as much, and they jump in. Troy Apke stops it in the cloud. He couldn't lead it up. So the next play, he essentially runs the same exact play. He's going to run the same play. But this time he realized it was too congested over there, so he's going to fade uh, Will Ty. He's going to fade his tight end to run off these flat zones to or to run off the deep blue. So he has more space to throw this pass. So that's the – ah, oh, shit. Like I said, third and 11. That's the adjustment he made in between plays. Literally the same exact play, but just a little bit of an adjustment. Less protection, but he has more routes out there. Great protection, good pocket, way to hold on. There he can throw the ball, and Troy Apke doesn't make the play right there. Troy Apke made the play. You can't be mad. If you're deliverance, man, you can't be mad that Troy Apke didn't continue to save the day for you knocking the ball out. I mean, Troy Apke is 45 zone, 30 play recognition. He's not going to hit. I'll be honest, Deliverance is the only player that had, that had Troy Apke that didn't really use him at all. You know, I think you got to kind of put Troy Apke in a position where you're going to use him. If you want to use her to safety, man, put one of your good safeties at linebacker, you know, and then use a Troy Apke. But he didn't make the play. He made it pl the next play. That's game over. Now what happens is my man Lawrence did not call timeout like chaos. He's going to go ahead and, and he really should be in field goal right now so he doesn't get milked. Honestly, and the reason he doesn't get or he doesn't get iced now, he doesn't get iced because deliverance calls timeout. I, w I would be so happy if he ran right there because him running right there will allow me to ice him. But so on and so forth, he runs the ball again. I would be in field goal here now, too. I wouldn't. Well, you can't be in field goal here because the clock stopped because you didn't come out in field goal on first down. But you guys will all learn this. 
sooner or later. But he gets the first down, the game's over. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm coming out in field goal. Well, I'm waiting for three minutes, coming out in field goal. And I talked about it last week or whatever week we did, whatever. Ice is stupid. The, the whole feature sucks. They got to fix it. They got to make it to where you, if you're in this situation, you're going to be iced. If I have a timeout, I don't care if I call it a first down, second down, five, fifth down, whatever it may be. I don't care if you ran 400 plays in between where I call a timeout and where you actually kick the field goal. Your field goal kicker is still iced. So he should still be iced regardless of what happens. Boom. So anyway, so on and so forth, he called timeouts. We're playing this game. Boom. We get to a third and ten. Now, this is tough. Now, honestly, the question here is, do I go for a perfect kick? Because we know a perfect kick cannot be blocked. You know, and right here is a distance, 23-yard line. It's a 37-yard field goal. You don't need full power to make this field goal. You could probably make it almost with, with two-thirds power. And that makes the kick that much easier to make. Now, for me, I would probably I would probably go with a comfortable. I wouldn't go for perfect because I just don't believe in the block. Now, what you'll see here is Lawrence is super nervous. You know, like I say, he's a football player. I don't know if he's ever been on his man stage. You see him put his head down here, and you'll see him actually start moving the meter over here and it starts shaking. His hands are shaking so bad, kicking this field goal as you see it. Boom, he's shaking. He has to let go of the controller, blowing his hands, wipe his hands off to go ahead and kick this field goal. And that's where he kicks it. And I'll tell you, if I'm not going to kick perfect, I'm kicking two-thirds. I'm not kicking right. If I'm gonna, if you're going to kick it that high on the meter, you might as well go for perfect. Now, he might have been going for perfect, and like I said, we're just nervous, so we go ahead and <laughs> So, damn, so that's what he got as far as perfect. But he comes down here, gets the per he gets the perfect on the backside. <laughs> pause. <laughs> so, but then he holds it long enough, pause, but he does get the block. Deliverance gets the block from hell to save his Pittsburgh Club Series life. Gets the block. Sucks that it happened, but he could have went for perfect, could have picked a better kick. That's truly a devastating thing to happen to Lawrence. I mean, just – Cause when you hit that kick perfect, you know the cur or you, when you hit the pick when you hit the kick good enough to go in, you know you won. As long as I don't block it, and you're saying please don't block it, please don't block it. He runs in there, blocks it, boom. We all talked about blocks not being in the game. I mean, I would be a fan of blocks not being in the game. It's something that's really not Madden related. Like the deliverance, then it wasn't any thought to it. It wasn't any strategy. I don't even know how much stick was involved in it. I don't even know how to block. You just j mash the trigger button, whatever it may be. But on and so forth, Deliverance gets the ball in overtime. And what happens is he's going to go down here and get a field goal. I, I forget exactly what he does to get a field goal. Here we go again. He went away from the drag slant. I think he wore that out too much. Good defense here. McNabb, go ahead and take off. Running the ball. I, forget. I think he just babies his way into the end zone. Oh, there we go. Slant drag, here it is. Running back, he missed the running back there, but hits the slant over the middle. Anyway, he goes ahead and, and kicks a field goal. He doesn't get a touchdown, he kicks a field goal. I kind of forget exactly how, why he kicks a field goal, why he didn't score. Third and 11. Now, this is where you can't take a sack. You know, if I'm Lawrence, you're getting the nickel, you're getting six, seven people because a sack wins me the game pretty much. But he rushes three, he rushes what? four or five but he gets bagged like that's super bagged so delivering kicks his field goal he kicks the ball off back to my man Lawrence first down like I said most of his plays were a little hitch a fade a post pretty much everything to to you know make you not guard the post so I can do the post first down he really doesn't have anything he goes for the fade boom that was close that's Dion out there. Another little speed differential. He could have got a touchdown there. Now, this, you'll you'll watch this play, what happens on this play. And we talked about Will Ty being on a fade on that play before the half or before the regulation ended, and that ran off a lot of zones. And he's going to run a similar concept here where he's, he flips the play. But this is his corner route. He's going to motion over Tyreek Hill here. He's going to fade or he's going to streak uh, Beckham. Steve, Tyreek Hill's on his post slant. It's pretty much the same thing. And what happens here is that, ah oh man, dude, he don't hold his play up, play up art that his play up art up that much. He needs the uh, stream shit. All right, so he's a flat here. He's got a streak here. He has a a slant here and a post come back across the middle. He's pretty much making. Uh, deliverance choose whether he's going to grab the post or the slant. 
That's all. And you see he doesn't have a flat, so he has to run to the flat first. So he's not going to cover this post. He's going to go flat to the slant. But what happens here for Lawrence is that his players hump each other. <laughs> his players hump each other, and it goes to the same way he, he got stopped the other way. He doesn't have a zone to run off. He doesn't have a deep zone to run off all the zones, really. If you watch his players hump each other, look at these two players right here. This is a streak to run off these deep blues. This is a slant to give him an option to throw to. You'll see what happens to him. They're still bumping. They both gave up on their routes. Look at that. Look at that. They're still right here. This is a streak. B is on a streak, and he's humping. They're still humping when he throws the ball. These guys are still humping. What that does is that these deep blues are not as deep as they should be. Pause. And uh, that allows this post route to get covered. And I'll give deliverance he clicked on and Deion Sanders, man. Deion Sanders stopped the fade. He came back and made this pick to end the game. Boom. So, Lawrence, that's sickening that those two players humped each other up and down the field. Like, what are you going to do? You know, that's the read. He covered the slant. That's pretty much a mental read. Like, he's ran that play so many times that he can mentally say, okay, you cover the slant, I'm going to throw this post back across the middle because I put my streak and I, and I flooded out the zones. It's going to be there. It's almost to the point where he didn't even see his players humping each other because when you call this play, you don't expect that. Your eyes are definitely looking right to left on this play. You're watching his user to see where he goes right. He covers the slant. Boom, he's going to be here. I got this route wide open. And the streak doesn't run off the zones, and I throw a pick. Boom. That's how Deliverance wins the Pittsburgh Club Series Championship. Made huge plays. I want to say he didn't. I think he turned the ball over one time versus Chaos. But for the most part, over the middle of the field, he made, he made great reads. He always got – when he needed four yards, he got four yards. That's pretty much how he played offense, man. He did a great job throughout the day on making, making a couple um, – Making tons of plays when he had long yards. If he had third and 18, he went and got 15 yards. That one that one play versus Chaos when he got third and 25 and got 19 yards and made himself a fourth and eight. He really just played smart, man. He didn't give up any huge plays defensively. He got fortunate with the, with Chaos make, having a brain fart and just <laughs> calling timeout on himself. <clears throat> Probably one of the worst mistakes we've seen. In the three years of the MCS was chaos calling the timeout in that situation. Then he got the kick return. Love. I mean, when you need it, you need it. That's my man Deliverance. Huge special teams guy. He definitely got that kick return, which was a terrible kick by chaos. Terrible user by chaos. Chaos lost that game more than uh, Deliverance won it. But that's when someone gives you a game, you take it. And that's what he did. And the game versus Lawrence, like I said, it was a battle back and forth. Boom. He got up early. He got up 10 points, and I think the biggest mistake he made in that game was not punting on that 4th and 15 and allow Lawrence to get back in the game. Lawrence caught a lot of momentum, went up 21-17. to 17. Then once Lawrence got the ball back, another stop. He kind of sat on the ball a little bit, didn't go for the touchdown to go up two scores, allowed Deliverance to tie the ball game up. Then Lawrence dotted, should have won the game, but Deliverance keep fighting, man. No, you, the game's never over until it's over. That is – Part of the appeal of the field goal block to the general public, I want to say as a competitor, I never want my field goal blocked ever. I earned that field goal. I earned getting into field goal range. I earned making a good kick that would have went through the uprights if it wasn't blocked. I did all that as a man player. The field goal block mechanic is not something that, you know, takes thought. It doesn't take stick. It doesn't take skill. It's something that, uh, honestly, I don't think – I think if we had a vote, what if we want to remove their cap, it would be, probably be close to 100% would want it out of the game. But at the same time, it adds appeal. It adds – you adds had us all watching. Whereas in the past years when there's no field goal block, once Lawrence was in field goal range, we would have turned away. But like, all oh, that game's over. You know, field goals were uh, just automatic. You know, and as, as much as they're automatic, I think they need to be a little bit harder. And then not pause. And the, the ice mechanic needs to be completely fixed because that's just embarrassing. As, as much as they want to say that, you know, the field goal blocking adds excitement to the end of the game, Somebody calling timeout and running spike four times so they don't get iced is, is obnoxious. You know, if you're going to have an ice feature, make it work all the time. And it's been – I think the ice feature has been in Madden since Madden 17, so this is the third year the ice feature has been in the game, and it's been something wrong with it all the time, whether it's come out and fake field goal to avoid ice, whether it's spike the ball to avoid – whatever it is to avoid ice, a kicker in real life cannot avoid the nerves that he has going out there. He – the more he has to wait, the more the nerves are. So, obviously, what we're doing essentially would make a kicker in real life worse. 
So they definitely need to fix that. Definitely need to get something going with that. But like I said in the beginning of the story, man, congratulations to the Deliverance. Back-to-back Pittsburgh Club Series champions. Probably one of the harder, obviously one of the harder uh, Club Series. He won it two years in a row. That's big ups to him, man. That's definitely a, a dope way to, to start the MCS for him. I wish him the best of luck in the uh, in the divisional rounds against the Browns and the Ravens and the Bengals, which is probably – joke is probably the favorite for the Browns. I saw Crush play somebody the other night. Big awesomeness. Crush played him, and Crush looked very good, so Crush might be the favorite for the Bengals. I don't know who's in the Ravens. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe Crush and Joke – We'll have a chance to play Deliverance. So if they, if you're watching this, Crush or Joke, I mean, if Deliverance motions, he's running read option. If he doesn't motion, he's running level sale. Thank W Scout Report. So let's get to go. What you guys all came here for, man? New England Club Series. First, we got to talk about this broadcast before I get into probably one of the better Madden games that I've watched in a long time. One of the most interesting Madden games I've watched in a long time. One of the most, you know, nerdy Madden games I've watched in a long time. And we can get real nerdy, real mad nerdy if you want to during this game. And we're going to do that. But first, we got to talk about this broadcast because, I mean, Rico is my friend. Rico, I think Rico does a great job. But Rico cannot save, he can't save it all. He can't be the man all the time. You know, you can't have Rico, you know, you can't, my player, you can't put LeBron James with a, you know, Booby Gibson and Anderson Varejao and Zadrunas Ogalskis and expect him to always win. You know, and I thought I thought the people they paired uh, Rico with in the club series, I mean, he, they would have been better off just having Rico by himself. Honestly, it's to that point, man. If you're going to put – because let, let's, just, let, let's just see what the MCS is. You know, it, it's for us. You know, they're not getting 20,000 viewers. They're not getting 50,000 viewers. They're not getting new viewers to Madden. These people are here for competitive men. They understand it. They know what's going on. And you continue to insult them by putting people there that have no idea what's going on. It's it, it, it's it's okay. I, I can live with Larry because Larry puts a lot of work in. Larry understands the culture. He understands the community. And he's always hands-on with everything he does. Now, he doesn't know Madden that well. And he does some dumb stuff all the time. You know what I'm saying? He says some dumb stuff all the time, especially when he didn't know incomplete or complete a couple years ago. But Larry's put a lot of work in for Madden. You know, and when you just start putting anybody up there that has no – not only did this chick have no idea about Madden, I feel like she's never watched football before. You know, and that that's kind of the problem. Like, Larry, you put Larry, you put Amon Green, whoever they had in the C4, whatever it may be, they know football. You know, even when they have the, the you know, the, the, the ex-alumni players for certain club series, they know football. And you can always respect somebody's mind in football, even when it comes to men, as far as, you know, the clock and as far as, you know, playing the game. You can respect that. But to have a chick that had no idea what the hell she was talking about and just, just it was just, it made a mockery of the MCS, made a mockery of the broadcast of the MCS, and it just really made it look like a second-rate product when you're trying to advance, advance the MCS into esports when you put on a, a show like that to have people up there that have no idea what they're talking about. You know, and, and it's to the point where Rico, who we all agree has been around Madden, been around MCS the whole time. So he knows what he's talking about. And for him to have to cater to a chick that's clueless, you know, made him have to work harder and made his work worse and made him sound like he didn't know what he's talking about. So it was definitely a situation. And I also want to talk about, right, let me bring this up on the screen, though, because this is, this is another thing that just made me want to throw up a little bit was this 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 overlay. Like you had how long to now mind you, I'm not the greatest Photoshop person in the world. I'm not the greatest overlay person in the world. But who, somebody made this whole thing. You know, I'm gonna put the cameras over here on the right. I'm gonna put the first quarter red right thing over here. I'm gonna put the score under their names. It's gonna look really good. And then they decided to make this shit yellow. You could have made this any color in the world. You could have made this shit brown, and it would have been better than yellow with these bars. Who decided this? I want to know the person that took their time to make this overlay. Now, mind you, I, I could have made this overlay in 15 minutes, the exact same thing. I could have. Dubby, the Madden player, the guy that cuts down trees, could have made this goddamn overlay in 15 minutes. And you couldn't put a dark blue, like a dark blue overlay with the Patriots logo, maybe say Patriots Club Series, maybe say anything else other than a yellow shit overlay? 
and you put this out as the M- this is the this is the the uh, Patriots Club series. Like you got to be kidding me. Th- th- this was embarrassing to the MCS. This whole broadcast was embarrassing to the MCS, especially when, in, in a broadcast where you have Skimbo, where you have one of the most popular players in the world. All the kids in here know who Skimbo is, and you put on this shit show. Both the Patriots. And EA should be embarrassed for what they put on as far as a broadcast up there in New England. That was terrible. But anyway, let's get to the get to. Skimbo, my good friend, who I think is, I mean, I think Skimbo is the best man player in the world. And uh, J Wall, J Wall, who looks like he's eight, I think he might be nine. He definitely has the haircut of a six year old, J Wall. We got to talk about the haircut, man. As a man that doesn't have hair anymore, I got to tell you, while you have your hair, make sure you use it properly. Rocking around with the eight-year-old haircut is not it, man. You're growing into your youth now. You're going to get into your prime 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old ages, man. You got to learn how to – you got to put a little comb, put a little, you know, product in there, get the little part maybe, get a tap or fade, you know, all this, all this stuff, man. The, the eight-year-old haircut is not it, dude. Let's you know. I, I listen. I, I'll take you places. I, I man, cause shit, eight year old ain't it? But anyway, I heard a lot about Jay Wall. I never played Jay Wall. Never saw Jay Wall play. I just heard Skimbo talked about Jay Wall for two months. He really did. He just Jay Wall this, Jay Wall that. Trips tight end. I'm like, man, you you got you understand it. So meanwhile, I was trying to run trips tight end. I, the Bulls don't run trips tight end all all month. And Skimbo had a plan. I thought he had a good plan. I thought his plan was going to work. I thought his plan was definitely going to work after I watched J-Wall play his first game. I thought J-Wall's offense was just a predictable trips tight end, run PA counter with a drag to his running back tight end, put his running back on a fade, try to hit the crossing route, put a little hitch. Typical. And that's what most trips tight end is. And I can tell you that uh, I really thought Skimbo was going to bag. I thought he was going to bag his life away. I thought he was going to throw some picks, something that he did not do. And no matter, I feel like in Madden, if you don't throw picks, you're going to be in every game. You know, especially these games where people play conservative, the game is going to be short. If you don't turn the ball over, then, you, I mean, you'll be all right. So that was pretty much uh, was the biggest thing that impressed me. He didn't throw any interceptions. And I really thought Skimbo was going to super bag him. I thought he did bag him pretty well most of the game. I thought I thought as the game moved on, Jay Wall got a lot more comfortable. And I'll show you. I'll show you that that we're gonna get real nerdy here. All right, we're definitely gonna get real nerdy. Now, Skimbo's plan versus Trips tight end last year was blitz everybody and just lurk the whole three wide receiver side. That's how in the first tournament of the year, Man Classic in New York. That's how Skimbo bagged uh, Manu, who was playing probably the best Madden that that day in New York, and Skimbo played him in the finals and just had, Manu couldn't get a first down. That was his defense, and he he defended trips tight end as well as anybody in the world last year. He would blitz it off the left side, off the trip side. He would lurk the trip side. Boom! That was his defense all the time when he played trips tight end. And Skimbo is a robot. That is his defense. He's not going to get out of it. You, we didn't watch Skimbo play a thousand games at the MCS. We watched him play versus Mo in the first the first MCS where he let Mo run the ball thirty one times and he just stayed in the same defense. That's Skimbo. He has a plan. And his plan was similar this time. His plan was I'm and we still have this shit overlay. His plan was instead of blitzing the trust, I'm gonna blitz off the running back side. I'm gonna lurk the running back. I'm gonna cover this whole side. So because J Wall the easiest the easiest play for all these guys in trips tight end Table route running back, swing route running back, uh, speed out to the to the tight end. That's the easiest high. It's pretty much the only fast high low read in this formation. The other high low read over here is that speed out to this guy, but that takes a good three seconds. So that was the whole plan. You know, I got Ram. He put the thing about Skimbo that was wild. He put Dawkins at linebacker, Ramsey in the slot, Apke was the deep safety because they don't really do much anyway. And he was using Myrick or Apke, depending on what side. He always flipped this, so Ramsey was always on the trip side. Because I knew for a fact that J-Wall was going to throw a pick on that speed-out route. Because I done thrown 15 picks on that speed-out route 
on Jalen Ramsey because I always think it's open and Jalen Ramsey picks it off. So I was for certain Jay Wall was going to throw a pick against Jalen Ramsey. But he really the, – the thing about it is he stopped running that play because this is the play that Skimbo was worried about was this corner route play. He knew that he could not stop. There's nothing <laughs> – he can't cover the corner route. He, what he was trying to do was run all the way there, but it's impossible because you can't cover that. So it's just a matter of if these guys scream or not, whether Steve Smith is going to get – whether he's going to be able to throw the ball to Steve Smith or not. And so obviously this is the first play again. J. Wall has no idea what's going to happen. You know, it's just the first play. Let me run this. He puts two drags, two crossers in the corner route. Can he get some time? You see Skimbo has all that. Now he has to get the middle. But he hits the corner route. Boom. So what else happens? Blah, blah, blah. But this is just uh, the first drive where the offense or defense is pretty much just a filling out process. It's pretty much just, you know, let me find out what he's going to do so I can be prepared for the rest of the game pretty much. Because like I said about Simbo, he's a robot. He's not going to all of a sudden switch. You know, it's not all of a sudden next drive is going to be dollar or next drive is going to be manning people up. So there you see, it's flipped again. Dawkins is here. Jalen Ramsey is here. He's using an key. He's got to guard his whole right side. That, now, this is where I think he's going to throw a pick because Skimbo, the whole time he covers his crossing route. This, every single play that I ran against him, he covers the crossing route. But here he runs with it. He just, I, I don't know what. So that was bad user because I know he's pissed too because that's the number one play you practice against is that play. And he didn't cover the crossing route because he had Dawkins in the yellow. was going to bag the, bag the drag on Eckler who, who – J. Wall been telling, talking about for two weeks, this Eckler guy. And he did, uh, after watching the game for like the third time, Eckler did have a crazy good game for him. He really did. He goes with two hitches. But then you're gonna see, he doesn't know that Skimble's just going to lurk that whole side. Well, he, he's audible and whatever he may do. But anyway, this is the first drive, and J. Wall settles for three somehow. I forget. I don't know why he ran this play ever. He gets sacked. And the, once you get sacked, you're pretty much settling for three. And just because I want to look at the overlay here. He gets a third and one. He doesn't get stopped here, does he? He may get this and get inside of the, the whatchamacallit. Eckler definitely. He went with five hitches. Oh, Vic went and, got, went and scrambled for that. But anyway, so on and so forth, he settles for three. I forget what he did. I think he's doing the flats. Got to a third and four. And he didn't have nothing there. But he settles for three, kicks the ball off. There. He, settled, he got sacked, I think. Settles for three and kicks the ball off to Skimbo. I believe he's he scum kicks and it goes out of bounds. Now, now the one thing Skimbo did, they made a big deal about it during the during the uh, broadcast, is that he he uh, he switched to Michael Vick the last week. Smartest thing he ever did. I don't think the broadcast lady knew who Michael Vick was, <clears throat> because I, I honestly just don't think she know. This is a great return. I'd like a better move right there than what he got. Forty-five yard line a return. Tyreek Hill, that's half the way up the field. You know, you're up 3 nothing. you get a kick return like that. That's huge. Again, Skimbo, you see him trying to rejuvenate uh, Tyreek Hill, pause. And uh, he's going, uh, Skimbo is a New England bunch. It's just pat sail, curl flat, and verticals. He just does a great job of knowing when to call what. He does a great job of mixing up his other routes, so he always has someone to throw the ball to. And the first play, man, he's, uh, he honestly just he does a great job of just taking off of Michael Vick. Like, yep, I see it open. Boom, I'm going to take off with Michael Vick. And Steve Young might get eight there. Michael Vick gets 28. So now you're right in field goal range. Boom, right away, right off the bat. So if you're Jay Wall, you're like, oh, why, well, damn, the game's tied. He throws a dot, then he gets inside the tent. This is, has been his red zone stuff for two months now. <clears throat> and uh, well, Michael Vick again running away from people. Doesn't make a play, but he definitely throws the ball away. Eventually, all right, so he gets the 30 inches. He no huddles, runs the 01 trap, gets a shitty block over there by his 10 cap tight end. And what he does is he goes for this fourth and one. I've seen him do this before. He did it against Problem in the first game of the Ultimate League, or actually not in Ultimate League, in the, the whole tournament last year. Goes on aggressive. Now, he doesn't have a good running back. It's base Tevin Coleman. But uh, he feels like he can get it, and the reason he go for this because getting seven here is such a big deal. It's so early in the game he can overcome it if he doesn't get it. And uh, he goes ahead, Tevin Coleman runs an end zone. That's a huge play there for him to go ahead and get that touchdown. Goes up 7-3 and feels good. And I'll show the next drive for J-Wall was pretty wild. 
honestly, this 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 drive for him kept him in the – this game could have got real ugly real fast with a sack right here. It could have got out of hand is what could have happened, really. But I'll show you the play that really saved Jay Wall. Two plays back-to-back. -back. Gets to a second and 15. He goes ahead and I, I believe he just throws it incomplete. Now, he doesn't fully have a grasp of what Skimbo's doing. He really doesn't. They, now, right now, I have three hitches on the right side. Tries to throw a hitch. That's Brian Dawkins in the linebacker rather than Troy Apke. Swats it. We would have loved to pick six right there, but, you know, Dawkins a swat is cool. Now, third and 15, <clears throat> Skimbo's up 7-3. He gets the ball at half. You know, if he can get a stop right here and go 14-3, to three, even 10-3, to three, getting the ball at half is huge. And you'll see this is why uh, this is why everybody should have Michael Vick, really, because th this is just the luckiest play in the world, and it's a huge play. He goes with the same play, looking for the corner route. Skimble gets a huge loop, and Vick just steps right ahead of it, doesn't trip over anybody, then fights for two extra yards to go ahead and get him to a fourth in inches. That's crazy. And you see Skimble, that's the Skimble disgust where he blinks his eyes like that. <laughs> but it's just this is the difference between – Fourth and 25, <clears throat> as you see this guy, look at, look at the loop. He just doesn't even put an arm out. And the crazy part is, how does Vic not trip over any of these guys? He just gets through there so easily. Boom. Then we come up here, and he bounces off that guy. I believe that's Myrick, though. Bounces off him, falls forward for another two yards. Huge play. And look, see, there it is. Oh, my God, I just can't believe this shit. Oh, my God, you know, we're just so lucky, these kids. So, bang, so there we are. We got a fourth in inches. <clears throat> now, you got to play. If it was fourth and three, I don't think I would have played the run. But here we go with him running the play that Skimbo has the bag for. He's going to have Dawkins right here in the yellow zone playing shallow. <clears throat> he's going to play underneath. And really, he just doesn't have anything. He has this dragger to crossing route. This is Dawkins in a, in a underneath yellow. Jumps in front, and Eckler makes holds on to that over Dawkins. So, Jay Wall is right. Eckler, two two plays that could have just changed the tide of the game, keeps Jay Wall alive. Seven to three, he's still driving with the ball. Now, if you're Jay Wall from, from going third and 15 on your own, what, 15-yard line, now you got a first down. That's a sigh of relief. That's like, okay, now I'm back. Let me start cooking. Let me get a uh, let me figure out what he's doing on defense. He still doesn't fully get it, but this play is just killing Skimbo. This play killed him all day, and it was the number one play he was afraid of. Because, like I said, you had to bag for that crossers play with the drag. You had to bag for that. This was the play <clears throat> that really killed him all game. That's why I talk about Skimbo being a robot. He was never going to come out of this defense. He was going to continue to just hope that he got pressure before that play beat him. And he could never really learn. Because the one thing about is the his his user was so important for stopping the run. Like, he'll stay here and try to loop around and stop the run. But he also has to guard this flat. So it's one or the other. He has to loop for the – he has to shoot right for the run or shoot left for the pass. So it kind of becomes a guessing game and, and a reactionary game for him defensively. <clears throat> you see the run. The run works pretty good, as even though Bosa was fighting right there and Tevin Coleman was fighting. Boom. So, you know, Jay Wall's smiling, his little eight-year-old haircut. I mean, this, you know, this thing's just whopping in the wind. <laughs> so he gets to the second and one. This is a down where you can try to see exactly what he's doing. But he's going ahead and just keep running it. Let me see this drive here. Okay. Now now what happens is we get to first and ten. He finally Oh no, he gets sacked on first down. And this is where look, when he gets sacked on first down, he realized Skimbo's cover covering the flat. I believe the next play is the one where he actually motions out of out route. And this changed the game. This once he started freestyling this, it changed the game. The motion out route. Because now Skimbo got to go out there and guard that. He can't go out and guard that and guard the run and, and stay in that spot at the same time. He can't do all that. That's impossible. Once he changed, once he started motioning a flat route over there, rather than relying on the running back to get out there in a flat route, it, it changed the game. 
it really did. It just put so much more stress on Skimbo's user. He had to do way too much with his user. And that's where I was like, okay, the kid's starting. He, he, I mean, two drives into the game, he's starting to get a hang for what's going on and what he needs to do. He gets a third and 11 here. Now, this is another one Skimbo would like to have back. I thought he gave it a crossing route. What's his lurk? And he, he gives up that that route right there. He doesn't give up that route. That's a that's seven to three instead of Jay Walls going to score a touchdown. But if he doesn't give up this route, it's seven it's seven to six because he gets the loop. He's not going to have time to throw this speed out. That's the read. Is I have a speed out motion to the speed out or speed out to the run to the tight end. He's not going to have time to throw this because he's about to get hit. Skimbo doesn't cover his responsibility. If he covers his responsibility, it's seven to six. But Jay Wall dots him. Boom. First down. We're going to take this to the two minute warning. And I'll show you. <laughs> and this is where I started like, damn, this is where I started feeling like, all right, Jay Wall actually like really tough. Like he's actually smart. Now I think people are good at man. I really do. But I don't think too many people are smart. And this is when I was like, OK, this kid's kind of smart because <laughs> he gets a first down and he's going to run inside zone here. But but I just talked about how much Skimbo's user has to guard. Watch when he snaps his ball. Now, most people, we watch the, just watch Deliverance two games, snap the ball when he's right here the whole time, right? Extra blocker, extra blocker. But he knows Skimbo has to cover this out route. So he knows that Skimbo has to shoot out here to cover the out route. Because Skimbo's a robot. He'll never put the outside guy in a cloud zone. He'll never put this extra guy in. He'll never man anybody up. He's going to run out there and cover it. And watch what him, him snapping the motion when he's all the way out to the left makes Skimbo user do. Watch Skimbo's user. All the way to the left, out of the play, easy inside zone, touchdown. By him not not snapping in the run spot, snapping in the passing spot, took Skimbo's user all the way out, bang, touchdown. Just it's just little stuff, little stuff like that. I was like, all right, the kid kind of smart. He's now 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 I'm starting to worry. Like, all right, he he he's kind of getting the hang of playing against this defense. You know that was that was a drive where Skimbo should got off the field ten times. But it's also a drive where Jay Wall learned a lot, and he got comfortable, even though he was hella uncomfortable so many plays in that drive. But he, he got so many looks at the defense, he started getting comfortable. But he kicks it out of bounds again. If you're Skimbo, you want to go down the field. <sighs> Let's see. All right, I'm going to show you a couple other things. Now Skimbo has to go get some points here. Once again, curl flat. That's all this is, just curl flat with a drag. He has time. Michael Vick, 10 yards. No, let's settle out. The kid's not a genius. No, it's not a, he's not a genius. Let's, I mean, he, he does some dumb shit. <laughs> Stay where we're at, folks. Stay where we're at. Everybody just take a deep breath. Everybody good. Relax. Relax. So Skimbo gets a second and two, runs a little base. That's Apke just block shedding right there. Skimbo try to kick it outside. Apke, when you're a user, you just block shed everybody. Now, this is an important play. This is probably the most important play. Not, I mean, one of the most important plays that Skimbo should have took note of, and he should have chalked it. Now, one of his plays is just a little – he likes to confuse the defense a little bit and motion over this guy and, and – just confuse the zones, confuse the man assignments, confuse the contains and everything in three through five odd. And what he's gonna do is gonna want to motion this guy over, motion him back, motion him back out, and hopefully get an easy touchdown because everybody's confused. And the minute he motions him over, Jay Wall calls timeout. He's seen enough. He knows what was going on. I know what was going on. He called timeout right there. He wanted no parts of that shit. Once he called timeout, you got to know, like, all right, this kid, he on top of that. He saw what was going to happen. He calls timeout. <clears throat> so he's not going to get tricked by that play. Pretty much you realize this kid sees what's going on. He's not going to get tricked by that play. That play has to be out of the playbook. That play has to be. It's not going to work. So we'll, we'll come back to that later. Here's Skimball run verticals a little bit. It gets in the field goal range. You know, Skimball always has a good kicker. Boom. He was still an aggressive. God forbid he didn't get hit or anybody special to wide receivers. Uh, and um, so he's in field goal range already. It's a tie game. Whew. 
Now, this is a little bit crazy what happens with Skimbo here. A little bit of uncharacteristic. Those that are underneath, good tackle on the spin. He uses a timeout. Actually, real un not, I mean, it actually worked out pretty well for him. I don't know how he uses the timeout. I think he just ran right there. Sec third and seven right here. Skimbo's going to run a little comeback route here, and he gets caught on a deep tackle. This is banned up with a deep blue. You know that's not going to cover the comeback. Gets tackled inbounds. I wish he would have spun out of bounds, but he calls timeout here. Gets to the 15-yard line, and he goes to his uh, his uh, tight gun ace slot offset. Uh, that's something he's been running a lot. I mean, not really from the 15-yard line. And most of the time when I've played him on the 15-yard, when he's this far away, especially in this time slot, while I was watching this, I fully expected him to throw the ball to Randy Moss. That's the only receiver that can score a touchdown for you right here. And I feel like he – and this stupid-ass overlay right there in the back of the end zone, I feel like he had ran, I feel like he had Randy Moss the entire play. Because you got to know 23 seconds, this this drag, this running back route, they're not going to get you anything but a hurry up and hurry up and kick a field goal. So I fully expected him to throw a ball to Randy Moss here. It's still 3-3-5 odd. It's still cover three. This is the seam. I feel like Randy Moss is, without a doubt, the person you throw the ball to. And I feel like from right here, he's got him. <laughs> like high ball it. Especially – Right here. If you stay on Randy Moss, boom, high ball right there. Let him go make a play for you. If not, you kick your field goal. Seriously, that's pretty much right here. I feel like, boom, he's look, He's just sitting over here. This guy's all the way to the left. You want to get a one-on-one -on -one rocket catch, and this guy's going to be late to the party. That's why you have Randy Moss. And with 18 seconds left, you can do it two more times. But what Skimbo does, and what I, he, he's the most annoying person in the world at this, rolling out, playmaker in back, and he takes this route. I'm not mad at it. 10 seconds left. He no huddles. And the same thing, he has one play right now. And, and he knows he has one play. He pretty much just snaps and throws the ball away. And he really flirts with not getting any points right here. I feel like they gave him the generous clock, too. Jay Wall thought it was over. Gave him the generous clock. Allowed him to uh, go ahead and tie the game up at halftime. Crazy first half. I feel like the kids survived. I feel like. If he would have, if he would have got that sack on third and fifteen, or if Eckler would have dropped that drag route, Skimbo goes up fourteen to three. Skimbo goes up ten to three. The kid might have played differently. Being able to score a touchdown on that that struggle drive that he had was big for his confidence, big for his momentum, big for Skimbo's momentum. He looks down in the dumps, and kid looks ready to go, man. I mean, I feel like momentum, attitude, and your mindset is always a big thing in Madden, and you know him being able to get that touchdown was huge. Hold him three there. Skimble gets the ball out of half. And he goes down the field again. I mean, Skimbo, the first his first two drives when he was in bunch went down the field. The only reason I feel like he got stopped in that last drive is because the time the time ran out on him. You know, that was pretty much the only reason. And Michael Vick again. We see Skimbo with Michael Vick. We know Skimbo spends a lot of money on his O line. A good old line and Michael Vick is a dangerous combination of salary cap because once the loop doesn't come in, nobody fights. First down again. Bang. So he's pretty much – the overlay is just disgusting. Disgusting. <clears throat> the overlay was so bad, I text Rico at, after the first game and said, bro, turn that shit off. And they did for the most part. So here he goes. He, it, it, in bunch, everything looks fine. Whether it's curl flat, whether it's pass sail, whether it's, it's verticals, he's moving the ball. You know, even if it's, if it's base, whatever it may be, he's definitely, definitely moving the ball. He's definitely looking comfortable. He's using Michael Vick like he's used them all along. Everything's looking good. Everything's under control. Throws a drag underneath. Another first down. Was it 9 for 11? 91 yards. Efficient. Typical skin bowl, typical no but play to call every time. Know how to control the game, I, and I feel good. You know, I feel good watching this. I'm like, man, Skimbo's really getting it done. His offense is moving good. He's not getting bagged. I don't think at one point I've watched this game and said Skimbo was bagged. You know, and then we see Tevin Coleman making plays. Good good stick by both of them there. One by Jay Wall for predicting the spin, and then one for Skimbo just for running right by him. Probably got him an extra four or five yards, whereas if he spun right into the user, <clears throat> Me, myself, I'm still spinning there for the fluky because the fluky is live and the spin gets you the fluky. But now he goes back to the ace we talked about. Ace on the 18-yard line 
Apke blows it up. Another user blocks it with Apke. You can't block him if he's a user. I'm starting to agree with Zan after watching all these films that, you know, these little bum-ass safeties are doing a little bit too much in the running game. And uh, so he gets to a second and ten. He's still in the ace, and he's going to run again. That time he gets super blown up by Jabal Sheard. Now you get to a third and 14. It pretty much went up and down the field in a bunch, got down here to the 15-yard the line, and got and lost four yards. So he has one play, third and 14. He's going to run a bunch of verticals. He's going to have Moss in the slot. And this is and this play has killed us all this year. <clears throat> he wastes he throws high ball over there to his tight end. Michael Vick over those a high ball. As many he probably has 80 rushing yards of Michael Vick. Michael Vick is going to overthrow a high ball. That's why looking back on this to me. I mean the A slot was cool. But I feel like he just would have ran a bunch of verticals three times. Michael Vick is completing one of those. But anyway, that makes him hold him to three. I feel like the, the A slot really killed him right there. <clears throat> the A slot really killed him because the run didn't work. You know, we see all these other kids running the ball so easily for four and five yards. Skimbo runs twice and gets negative four yards. I don't know if Skimbo will ever run again. It was a good kickoff. And what we do? This is where um, this is where I felt like Jay Wall. He he knew the plan, stuck to the plan. He got way more comfortable right here. I feel like he realized what the defense was. He realized what he needed to do every time. He realized uh, what what setups he needed to use. He realized he needed to go away from the play action play. The play action play wasn't it. He needed to stick just honestly with inside zone and the corner route play and mix in a little out route that he motioned over and he'd be fine. And that's what he does pretty much most of the game here. <clears throat> And like I said, this play they pretty much use just for the table route. But just keep mixing it up. You have the game. And we see Brian Daw Brian Dawkins, man, as much as I love Brian Dawkins, I feel like he let down Skimbo in this game. I put a lot of faith in a Brian Dawkins in this game, and he, he definitely let down uh, Skimbo. But like I said, worried about inside zone, the corner route play. Those were the two players to worried about. And like I said, and not, this is another sense of the motion, another – example of the motion you know it's a pass play but he knows Skimbo has to play the run and the flat and this is where Skimbo running the same defense every play isn't uh, isn't ideal against somebody that gets the hang of it so now he bluffs the motion like he's running the ball but he got the table route out here and knowing that Skimbo is going to have to guard both the run and the table route he bluffs the bluffs the motion like it's a run and Skim, where's Skimbo user? Right here in the A-gap. And where's his running back? Boom, in the flat with nobody over there because that's supposed to be Skimbo's lurk. Boom. There we go. Good job making him spin a little late. Gets 12 yards on that play. That's when it's like, okay, he, he kind of he's kind of hip to what you're doing. You know? <clears throat> so just keep running the ball. That's what I would do. If I was in Jay Wall's corner, I would say, dude, just keep running the ball. Keep running these plays where you're attacking the flat, making them choose whether he's going to guard the run or the flat. That's pretty much what I would stick to. That's where my bread would be buttered, pretty much. But I don't think this is where he starts bugging. No, this is, I think it's the next the next set of downs when he starts bugging. Yeah. I'll show you when Jay Wall starts bugging. The worst thing. I would have strangled him. If this was my buddy and he played and made this call, <clears throat> Because this is, I feel like he's super comfortable now. I feel like it's a laugh in the park right now with him playing offense. But what he does, I think he gets this first down. And then he gets cute. Too many people get cute. Getting cute isn't always the best. Here we go with the same play that's killed Skimbo all day. What's he going to do with the out route motion? He's got all day. Rolls out. Oh, the Savaris Moore actually wanted to play right there. Didn't get blocked. Get to a third and eight. Uh, I'm trying to think of my mind. Oh, here we go. Another thing right here. Third and eight. Now, this is where Skimbo's. He's going to play off coverage or, like, shade up. You know, and he's going to run the same play. You know. And what he's going to do on this. Oh, I want to see this play art. Show it again one time. What he's going to do on this play art is he's going to keep this table route. Because he knows Skimbo has to guard this flat. 
Like, it's literally like, and when I play skimbo, this is what I know. I see your play art, dude. Your play art's the same every time. And when I think Jay Wall's playing offense, he sees Skimbo's play art. He said, dude, take your dumb ass over here to the flat every play, and I'm just going to pepper over here. It's either going to be the corner route or the in route. Now, I don't know if he was just throwing this in route, like, because he took the streak in here, and like, he blocked the streak. So, to me, Jay Wall's thinking right here, I'm not even – I don't even think the corner route's an option because I'm not running off any of the zones. So, the, the deep zones might still play it. So, I pretty much just want to get Skimbo out the way and throw this in route right here. If I don't get a first down, I tie the game up. That's what I'm thinking he's thinking about. Blocks him. Look at Skimbo. Got to run to the flat. Here we go. Just, just – <laughs> It's like he's just he's just ki- he's just killing Skimbo right now. He's just killing this setup right now, and because he's playing off, Dawkins is going to be 15 yards down the field. Throws an in route underneath. Look where Dawkins is, 15 yards down the field. Throws the ball underneath. <laughs> like, but <laughs> it, it's it's not an awful play because he knows what the player he knows Skimbo's defense. He's got Skimbo licked right now. Like it's pause. It's it's cooked like it, it's cooked and what and you see he he's he's head bobbing he's feeling good he's got the eight year old bang popping and for some reason this is what this is what the kid does first and ten you're doing whatever you want he says you know what I'm gonna run this shit play throw it again I'm gonna start running this play why you have done whatever you wanted long as you put a flat rod on the left, you can throw anything else over the middle of the field. You can throw anything you want. If there's a flat rod on the left that he has to guard, you can run the ball, you can throw to the flat, but he wants to run a post, a crossing route, and you're, deep, you're already close to the end zone. There's no point in even trying to throw the crossing route, and he calls this play. This is where I was like, this, this kid, he, he figured it all out, but then he's like still a dumbass kid. Like, just keep pounding and pounding the same plays that got you down here. And he calls this play – and I don't even think he has a short read. I think it's one – sometimes I'll do this in the game. Like, all right, this, sometimes you give your opponent, like, okay, he's going to eventually do something to stop this shit that I'm doing. And you go to try to get, like, the count – try to go to the counter, like, be one step ahead of him. But Skimbo don't do that. Skimbo is going to play the same defense the whole time. Like, he, he has a plan. He's going to stick to it. So – and I don't even think – that there's no underneath route. Are we really just – Really, Jay Wall, we're, we're two fades, a crossing route, and a post. Once we got all the way down to the thirty yard line, that's that's the call. This is why this is this is why I was like, what a dumbass kid. Like as good as he played, he still called this this, this offense. And stay in the pocket. What are you doing? Did you want to just go greet this guy? Look look at this pocket right here. The, I mean, just th- when three three five I doesn't loop, man, boy, I tell you, it's some shit. Cause who is fighting right here? And honestly, as bad as a play this was, you're going to have somebody open. But he wants to go shake this guy's hand right here. Look at this. Oh, yeah, here you go, buddy. Yeah, come sack me. Oh, yeah, okay, you. Oh, so he got sacked. Oh, shit, I lost six yards. Now, Jay Wall is going to think, you know, I'm going to go. I think, I think I'm going to go back to what got me down here. You think he would think that, like, damn, that, damn, he really not going to change his defense. Okay, now let me go back to what got me here. Ah, man, he just did some dumb shit here. He quick snapped it, nothing, and he actually got shedded there, though, because that would have worked, but that's why you run 3 3 5 odd. You run it till it looks terrible when it doesn't work, but when it works, you're sacked. So now you get third and 21, and Jay Wall and Skimbo and everybody else in the world is thinking the same thing. Can't let them get back in field goal range. <clears throat> Pretty much the first down is not going to happen. You're not going to get this first down, and Jay Wall does the smart thing, man. He calls inside zone with the motion out here. He let him set, though. I don't know why he let him set. He's never let him set. Oh, shit. Oh, my bad. My bad. Fourth quarter. My bad. Everybody good? Everybody good? This was a huge – but this was a huge play right here, though, because Skimbo actually does – he does run the ball. I mean, he probably could have went to that in route again and just throw it underneath, but he does run the ball right here. Gets he runs to where and he gets a stop and Skimbo knows. So Skimbo doesn't show that much emotion lately. He knows that this kid is gonna get no points now. So he's gonna get no points. Bang, <clears throat> does a smart thing, punts the ball. And Jay Wall is a complete loser. I'll tell you this right now. Anybody that punts the ball on this goofy ass camera angle, you're a loser. I'll tell you that right now. If you change your camera angle in Madden. 
you're a loser. I'll tell you that right now, period. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want any rebuttal. You change your camera angle, you're a loser, period. Jay Wall has an eight-year-old haircut, and he punts on the baby camera. He's a loser. It's okay, buddy. You got a long way to go. You're still a young buck. You're going to grow up a little bit. But anyway, it's a great punt, nevertheless, eight-yard line. So Skimbo can win the game. Go get seven. At least go take time off the clock. Bang. The, you, the kid was dying you. He did some dumb shit, got sacked a bunch of times. He's still even doing dumb shit. And you listen, you have every time it's been a bunch, it's looked it, it's looked it, it's looked easy. You know, he's played very well in bunch. Throw a little quick drag before it gets to the flat zones. Kimball's been the king of that for years. Going right down the field, he's gonna run a little verticals here. Bang. Able to throw the wheel route. Boom. First down. Keep the clock moving a little bit. We can use all of this. We can take this vitamin D out here. We can definitely go ahead and get this, hopefully get this under, hopefully start to get into Jay Wall timeouts eventually, man. And Skimbo, he didn't get the first down right there, boom. But he's going to come out in goal line right there. And I don't know what Jay Wall wanted to do here. I'm sometimes lenient on coming out in goal line defense because I don't want to give up a one-play touchdown on a toss or a power or whatever it may be. I'm kind of almost conceding the first down, and that's why he comes out in 3-3-5 odd. And he pretty much can seize the first down on a quarterback sneak. I, I would be afraid to play goal line defense because of the one play touchdown. But okay, so if you're Jay Wall, you can't let him get too many more first downs or you're going to be cooked. You're already down three points. Skimbo's look good. He's moving the ball. He's definitely, I mean, I feel like offensively, I felt very good about Skimbo playing in this game. I felt like he really made the right calls. If if he didn't run the ace shit, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like he would have had more points. Where he goes, quick snap, curl flat, has a comeback route over here on the right. The spin, try to get him away. Got him out of bounds. That hurt. It took it, so now you can't take 20 more seconds off the clock. But here you go. So we have we're we're moving the ball. Everything's everybody's good. Everybody's fine. And here he goes for that play again, which Jay Wall called timeout the first half. So he knows what's going on. He's not clueless. He's hip to this shit. You know, he's not calling timeout here. I mean, he he's not gonna let anything goofy happen. And he deep halves the free safety. He has three streaks on the field. Not one of them is open, and we get sacked. So we go from moving the ball fine, first and ten, we try our goofy, glitchy play, and it doesn't work because the kid's hip to it. He showed you he was hip to it in the first half when he called timeout when you tried it. So from the beginning where he showed – when he called timeout and realized what was going on, I don't think I, – I feel like the play should have been – out the playbook because the kid's hip to it. He knows what's going to happen. It's not going to allow it to happen again. He's obviously staring at his play art. He's obviously hip to what's going to happen. So he's not going to allow you to get a one-play touchdown or something easy. So he went for it, went from a first and 10. Now we're second and 18. We went from throwing drags for three yards, throwing comeback routes to trying three streaks. Boom. Okay. Second and 18. Let's try to get back here. And it's a certain part of the game where the kid starts blitzing the shit out of Skimbo. It's here. And lurking this side. I think that's seven that just he just sent. I think he just sent – and this is where I was like, uh-oh. He's the <laughs> I think he's blitzing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, manned up and like two deep blues, and he's got this whole left side. Oh, my God. I mean, I think it's eight. <laughs> Hold on. One, two, three, four – it's seven. That's a great call. And once he got sacked here, I mean, you're shit out of luck, kid. But it just goes back to him running the same. He he went to curl flat again. I mean, we got like three people blocking over here, but he sent everybody. But once he started going for the the just blitz off the no baseline and uh, guard that side, that changed it a little bit. He gets once you get sacked there, the the, the drive's over. It's pretty much. Uh, Hopefully get a little bit of yards uh, to get my punt off, honestly, right here. Third and 27. And Skimbo's holding the pocket. Could have got 40 yards with Vic, but he gets sacked again. So we go from first and 10, Chet. We go from first and 10 on the 36 to fourth and what is it, fourth and 30? Fourth and 38 on Skimbo's nine-yard line because we just we wanted to do throw streaks. We go from first and 10 on his 36 to fourth and 38 on his nine. 
Fourth and 38. Jesus Christ. So now you got a punt. Now, Skimbo, I'll tell you this. He's probably the most prepared, like, nerdy person where, like, my punter can – if my punter's on the left hash, he can punt it to the right hash and get 37 yards. If he's on the left hash and the wind is to his back, he can punt and get 44 yards. Just depends on where I put where I punt the ball. So he's going to punt the ball. I think he subbed in his kicker, which is I don't know, but he knows this stuff. Like he, if I if I had one person to dot a punt in my life, I would pick Skimbo. Like I would I would pick I would I'd be like, listen, he would say my kicker has you know 90 kick power. And stuff like that. But here he goes. He got Greg Zerline. He puts it over here to the right. I don't know. I can't see the wind because of this shitty overlay. Kicks the ball. And and this is not his best punt. And why it's not his best punt, you don't see the little reticle at all. The reticle's out here. So what that tells me is he could have got a lot more distance for what he punted. So from the nine-yard line, we get to the 41-yard line. That's a net punt of 31 yards. I believe, as my math is right. 31, it might even be less than that. No, it's 32 yards. 32 yards. 32-yard punt with no reticle over here. I feel like it could have been a 42-yard punt. It could have backed him up past midfield, but he pretty much gave him the ball right there. Yeah, so, I mean, now we're the same thing. Jay Wall has to say, I'm never running that play action play again. That play sucks. He's still stuck on the new view. You can see he's panicking. and he starts talking to the official, like, Can I fix it? I can't fix it. What's going on? I don't my well, new view. I don't get to change it. Blah, blah, blah. What can I do? This? Oh, all right, everybody, everything's good now. Okay. So he's got the ball back. And what's he gonna go for? This same play. A little quick out route over here to the left. Oh, Dawkins again. Dawkins with Eckler. Eckler might really be hell. Because, he once again, this guy, this Dawkins is in the yellow zone shaded down. He jumps it, but just a little bit too late. A little bit too late. So now you're f f uh, proudly in field goal range. Take this to the two-minute warning. He's going to run inside zone. Get to a third and two. I didn't even take no more notes because I can talk all this out. I know what happens. I've watched this game three times already. So is he going to run the play action play? Do you guys think he's really going to run this shit play? There's no way. Oh, I know what he does here. Yes, I remember what he does here too. This is another great play. The only, he base the line so he goes out there, covers the out route. He hits the fade inside the Eckler. Eckler making another. I mean, I can't lie. After watching this again and again and again, Eckler might be it. He might get a tryout. But making another tough catch that he could have dropped, man. He could have dropped that one. Skimbo calls timeout because he knows the kid's getting a field goal. He knows he can get the ball back. So he's definitely uh, preparing to get the ball back. He's got to get off the field here. He's got to hold him right here. Uh, I don't. I mean, it's hard to ever critique uh, players down here because it's so hard to uh, score. But just some of the throws and some of the, the plays, I would not be mad with three straight runs right here, especially after this one almost gets a touchdown. But <laughs> once again, <laughs> our guy Apke just sheds the shit out of somebody. Hold up. Who? Oh, I mean, at least it's Brandon Cooks or 14. Who's 14? Oh, Diggs. Yeah, Diggs, right? Yeah, at least he shed a, a wide receiver. But Cooks definitely fried him right there. Ek or uh, Apke fried him right there. Second and six. I mean, after you get four yards, that could have easily been easily been a touchdown, honestly, if he would have got just a little bit better blocking. So I, I would not be mad if Jay Wald ran the ball three times right here. You kind of know Skimbo can't run commit because he'd risk giving up the lead and losing the game. So to me, I would never run commit in this situation. But I would keep peppering that right side, and he does right here. We those two drags coming over the middle. And this is where I think you got to get busy with Mike. He goes for the high ball crossing route. It's an overthrow. But this is what I see. Bro, get busy. You're inside the 10-yard line, man. Take this guy and go get busy. Because look at Skimbo's going to fall back, at least threaten the scramble. This got touchdown written all over it to Michael Vick. But he high balls it right there. Boom. So that saves Skimbo a timeout. 
So if you decide to pass there, you have to go for this first down. You can't just run the ball and concede because if you were going to run the ball and concede, you could have started your running ball and concede on second down. But I think he's going to run. No, I, don't, I think he – no, he gets bagged. He gets bagged right here. In route right there, bang. Actually, somebody – was that – did the loop get him? I think the loop – I guess the loop got him. With the glitchy loop. Who the hell <laughs> – what the – that was that was a stupid looking. But okay, so he kicks his field goal. Bang, tie game. Skimbo has no timeouts. 103 left. Skimbo's gotta be feeling like I can go down the field. I don't think I don't think uh <sighs> I don't think Jay Wall's defense is crazy. Once he starts blitzing the outside corner, I feel like Skimbo's gotta do a little more motion and out. You can't allow that to happen. A little more verticals. But so here he comes out, the first play. Uh, I see. He look, he did that blitz again, and I look. This is what drives me crazy, though. Like, why did you do this? He's been running comeback route over here all game, and he's been getting it about three or four times. So, and you gotta know this is the defense he played the last time. You know, and you're just so quick to quick snap this play with a streak out here. Why Why would you think a streak would – If maybe you think he'd man him up straight and the fade would burn him? Because he did put Tyree kill. I think that's I think that's what he thought. If you see right here, he puts Tyree kill over here to the left and puts Dorsett over here. So I think what he thinks is that he's going to man him up straight with the left guy, with the left corner. He just wants to burn him with a fade. Yeah, so that's what that's what he's thinking that I can burn this guy with a fade and win the game. But I think if I think you could have did that with any any play, the way he was playing defense the last drive with this blitzing off this off this edge and guarding us, this isn't going to be an option. So the best thing to do if you were going to look for this the whole time, you got to motion this guy out and take this corner away. But I mean, you had time. He just didn't do what you expected. So, I mean, just use Michael Vick, run away, throw the ball away. Boom. So that's cool. Now let's get back to the pass tail. Let's get back to the, you know, it, it can't just be curl flat. Let's get back to the verticals. So he switched them back now. Now I think he's going to go for the play again, I'm assuming. Yep. Now this play, one, he called timeout in the first half. Didn't let it happen. Second time you ran it in the second half, and when he didn't call timeout, it was bagged. He was on to it. He was hip. He saw that you had nothing to throw the ball to. You put two, three fades out there, you had nothing to throw the ball to. So now we're going to just try it again. You know, maybe he's going to let it slip this time. You know, because he's blitzing so many people, it's the best, you know. And, and to me, this this play lost him the game of trying to run this play. Still blitzes the shit out of him. Tries to lob it up, and Darius Slay gets over the top. Boom. Picked. I feel like if he didn't run this play on last drive and this drive, he goes down the field and wins the game. But because he wanted to run this play with three streaks down the field, it's the reason he lost the game. Because other than this, like I felt like he, I felt like he was moving the ball fine, man. It w it wasn't the prettiest, easiest shit in the world, but he was fighting and getting the ball down the field, man. And how does it feel? But now, this is where me, the man player, not the robot. I feel like Skimbo's a robot, and that's what makes him good. He's a robot. He done ran the same defense. The first thing I said, as soon as he threw that pick, all right, you all right. Don't give up the corner route. Don't give up the corner route. Don't give up the corner route. It's like, I, to me, I'm playing completely different defense now. I'm not looping. I'm not screaming. I'm chilling. 47 seconds. We're, let, let's just let's just let's just take some time here. You know, I, I I this cannot happen because this loses me the game. These little shits don't lose me the game. This shit or this crossing route loses me the game. B is all I'm guarding. You're throwing to somebody else, buddy. I'm on his ass. I'm not worried about inside zone. I'm not worried about table route. I'm not worried about curls. I'm not worried about shit. But this guy, you beat me with somebody else. God bless Jay Wall. Good game. And the first play. 
the first play. Uh, this is exactly what I said. Don't give up the corner route. Don't give up the corner route. Don't give up the corner route. We're gonna do the same thing. We're not. We're not gonna have any zones over here. I gotta cover this. I got. I can't jump out here because I gotta cover this curl. Here we go with my lurk. I can't go get him in corner route. What do we do? Wide open. Toe tap the sideline. Steve Smith. Now we're getting close to GGs in the chat. Now I already showed you how many times Jay Wall played Skimbo for a fool with his motion. He's going to do it for the biggest play of his life. One of them, shit. You need five yards maybe. You need four yards. You know, it's almost getting close to run commit for Skimbo. And this is because you can't let him get another inch pause. But I showed him about the motion. Watch his motion. Watch his motion. Watch Skimbo's user. Watch his user. All the way to the right, wide open inside zone. Ten yards, GG's in the chat. That's the ball game. Simple as that. Just like it's just like the kid. I felt like the kid figured out. He figured out the. Uh, he figured out the. He figured out the defense, man. He really did. I felt like if he didn't call that stupid ass play action play, he would have did a lot better than he did. But he really utilized. He really utilized his motion. Very well. He utilized the motion and he started freestyling to attack that flat more than just rely on a table route. He just really, he really, he really played well. He really, by the, by the second, halfway through the second drive, that one drive, that first drive before the half really saved him to keep him in the game. It really was a uh, one that Skimbo, obviously, that's the drive he's going to think about and the one he's going to uh, wish that he got to stop because if he goes up 10-3, he goes up 14-3, then it changes the way the kid plays, you know, and that's when he starts sweating. He never really sweated at being able to, being able to get a touchdown out of the drive where he struggled the most. He scored one touchdown in this game, and it came from the drive when he struggled the most. That's a good feeling. That's relaxing, and he wins the game with a perfect kick. We saw – we saw – whatchamacallit, we just saw Deliverance block a kick from Lawrence because he didn't go perfect. It's a little easier to go perfect kick when you need the power anyway. And, of course, we got the overlay for that play. And just, I mean, as much as, I mean, I feel like Skimbo got locked in on the, the, the three-streak play. If he would have kept it basic with his drags and, and the post route, and it, he would have got down the field or at least took a little more time off the clock. So that game would have went to overtime or something like that. But, I mean, congratulations to the eight-year-old man. He really played well. He's one of the few players that I've watched and was like, I'm really impressed. And that's his homies right there. All have the eight-year-old haircut. And this is my boo. This is my boo. I follow her on Twitter. I hit her up. Her DMs aren't open. She got to follow me back. But this is my boo. She don't know shit about football. And listen, and people that know shit about football don't even know shit about Madden. So if you don't know shit about football, you definitely don't know shit about Madden. But she looked good. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really appreciate her coming by. You know, next time we just going to have to give her a camera rather than a mic, and, and we'll be all right, you know. So, But, no, all jokes aside, man, Jay Wall was, like I said, one of the few people I watched and was honestly really impressed with the way he he played within the game. And as good as Skimbo is, like I said, I think Skimbo is the best man player in the world. As good as Skimbo is, he's not good at that at all. Like, once he's got his plan, he's got his plan. It's not going to change. He's not going to freestyle. He's not going to adapt. He's not going to change the defense. You know, he's not going to do the things that Jay Wall did to win the game. You know, anytime he just start motioning out routes and stuff like that, it's just something different. Oh, look, and Jay Wall is a whole five-five. Bro, we gotta do. We gotta get you to comb over with the with the pomade, and you need a fade, man. You need a fade. Once your little chin hairs grow in, and you get a little mustache. Bro, this kid is eight. Eight. Not nine. Not ten. He's eight. He's eight. And Jay Wall's going to be in Cali? Oh, my God. She's 5'10". Ain't no way you 5'10". So this chick is 5'10", too, huh? Because she don't got heels on with this leg, with a T-shirt. You 5'10". Get the hell out of here. I ain't no new youth. I'm not losing any dirty ass young boys. We're gonna have to fight and lose to one of these little ass kids. 
Like, like I was having sex before y'all was born. That's how crazy it is. Like, I could really be these, these children's father. It's bad, man. It's, it's definitely, I'm definitely old. No, we can't listen to an interview. You want to listen to an interview? Go listen to, go listen to that little rat on your own, all right? We're not giving him enough credit. I already told you, I already told you guys he played a great game, and I was impressed by him. And there's few people in the man world that I'm impressed by like that. And the abil- I think the ability to freestyle and adapt is the most impressive thing in Madden. I talked about people can have e-books, take ahead of money plays, PA counter, level sales, whatever it may be in the e-book. All you guys can have that, man. You guys can check out whatever site uh, my man T- J Wall is promoting because I know he has good content, whatever he wants to do. And um, it's not always about that. It's about the freestyle. It's about understanding the defense. And it's about understanding where to attack and how to attack it. I mean, he made a few bad calls and a few bad plays, but – he definitely showed that he knows how to adjust on the fly and he knows how to, you know, attack what somebody wants to do to him defensively. And uh, on his defense, he played well. I, I think Skimbo helped him, though. I think Skimbo made some very bad offensive calls. I feel like he got too greedy. I feel like once J. Walt showed you that he wasn't going to let the three fades beat him, then that should have been out the playbook. And uh, he held on to that too long, and it cost him his last two drives. I don't think – I think he allowed himself to get bagged, and that, that – He's going to be mad about that. It's like back in the day when he used to just sit on the Z spot a lot and not want to just take his flat corner strike. And I feel like that's what makes somebody a great player, their ability to take the flat and get some yards. He tried to force it down the field, and J-Wall bagged it up. He was prepared. And good luck. So, I mean, he's definitely going to have to play uh, maybe Blocky out of Miami. He's going to have to play AKG out of the Jets. My man AKG is one of the best players in the world right now. And uh, Buffalo, I don't know who's going to Buffalo. I don't really know all the people that are sneaking on these little clubs. But I'm going to be interested to see how he keeps going, if he keeps making a run, if he just cleans up a little bit of stuff that he does. I feel like he got a good chance of uh, making a deep run in this uh, salary cap tournament, man. And I'm a believer in Eckler. He made a bunch of tough catches for Jay Wall. And, I mean, I was really impressed by the kid. Disappointed my friend ain't, ain't win the game. I mean, I fully ex- expected him to win. I thought he had a great plan on defense. And I felt – I felt like if it, it, it would have got the early stops before he figured out what to do, then the game would have got out of hand. But because J. Wall fought, stayed in the game, got that touchdown, then by the second half it, it was over. For the, the skimbo plan was just by, by the second half, J. Wall just had him by the nuts, really. And, and if skimbo's a type man, if he'd have got up on you in the first half, and because his plan was good, he had a great plan. But once you figure it out, man, he knew what to do against it. So that that that, that little sequence where Vic outran. More and then Eckler caught that first down was was big for the kid, and but it was a great game. That was one of the better games of man I watched, and, and I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about it. I've been here for almost three hours now. My voice is gone. I broke down three of the six games, probably the three best, three great games. I said congratulations, to Deliverance and Jay Wall, man, are two kids that are on, on pace to make a run, man. I'm really excited. I think we got to wait till like February for these guys to play the Madden games. Uh, I don't know if there's any club series this week. I'm not hip to the schedule. Chat, can you guys tell me if there's a club series this week we have to keep our eye on? Or are we going to be talking about other stuff this week? Let me know, chat. Or YouTube comments below, let me know. It is November 13th, 2018. The Eagles is on Sunday. I was supposed to do the Eagles broadcast. I, because the Eagles Club Series is going to be right here at this building I'm in, local host on Third Street in Northern Liberties in Philadelphia, and you know, I, you know, guys know all you guys have been to Philadelphia. I work with Nerd Street very closely. These guys help me out a lot with my streaming, with my promotion, with this beautiful podcast setup. And uh, they asked me because they knew I wasn't competing. They asked me if I could do the broadcast. And between me and EA are not at best terms right now. The EA told me I cannot do the broadcast. They cannot have W.W. in the booth to do the broadcast, so I will not be available. I was excited about that. I was excited to call the games live like I do in the breakdowns and either by myself or with Rico, or I wish I would have a nice little hot chick next to me because I would have had fun with her. But <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. I thought it would have been dope doing that. So Sunday will be – is that all? Is there's no – there's nothing during the week that could go down? Like there's no – I know we got the tight or the uh, Vikings got to be coming up. I can't even think of the other club that's live event. Mm. 
That's just the Eagles. Yeah, I would have been excited about that, honestly. But I'll be ready to watch the Eagles. Got to watch uh, my man Noonan. I forget the fourth person, but obviously Figgy, hopefully he can be just like Deliverance and go back to back. Or uh, my man Slim. My man Slim, he's been to all the events in Philly. Definitely a cool kid, and I I wish him the best in this tournament. It's going to be his first little live event, but he's a good player. I, I fully expect him to make a good, nice little run. So I'll be rooting for him and, and, and Figgy, of course, because Figgy's the man. And hopefully one of them represent my city fairly well. Man, I wish I could do it, but right now my – my life and my situation was not for the MCS, but I have a great time calling these games and doing the podcast. I really appreciate you guys coming through and checking it out. Uh, it's definitely um, yeah. The Mudhead tournament, Mudhead's actually going to do the tournaments every Friday, little tournament for everybody, thirty-two man little tournament. So that's going to be pretty cool on Friday, similar to what Fortnite did. Uh, Mudhead's doing a lot of good things. I mean, Rockets, Rockets is really focused. He loves. <clears throat> Rockets for a mutt guy, you know, a content guy who really loves competitive Madden and the things they've been doing the last two years, at least for Madden, have been huge and it definitely continuing to help grow uh, competitive Madden. You know, as much as we love that, talking about MCS and, and watching MCS, Mudhead is doing a lot of big things and has a lot of great players in it. I am currently 0-3 in the Mudhead League. That's why it was not a topic tonight. I will continue to ignore the Mudhead League as long as I'm not doing good in it. But if I start popping, we're going to talk a whole segment about the Mudhead League. But if I keep getting popped, we won't bring up the Mudhead League on on this podcast. You know, it's really just not enough time to talk about the the Mudhead League. But in all seriousness, I am going to play T. Davis, Joe Rice, and Beast Mode Mac on Thursday. So that looks like I'm going to lose to T. Davis. I'm going to lose Beast Mode, but I'm going to beat the shit out of Joe Rice. So make sure you guys tune in. I think I'm going to start that at 9 p.m. on Thursday, man. So uh, definitely I appreciate you guys coming through. And this was Needed Podcast Episode 6. I will see you all next week.